I'm nervous. Fuck it, let's do it live. <laughs> Actually, here is the place for you. Uh, the end? No, the important questions. So I ask them. Yeah, it'll just help you out. Yeah. All right, here we go. I need help. Can you read these to me? To <laughs> here? <laughs> oh, the... Libertarians, I'm your host, Chris Spangle. We Are Libertarians brings you all of the irreverence modern politics deserves. Think of us as the love child of National Review and Mad Magazine. We explain to you what the hell is happening in our world today and how we can fix it by thinking differently. Rate and review us on iTunes, like us on Facebook, share this episode with friends, PayPal or at WeAreLibertarians.com. We are supported by listeners like you, so $1 per episode by pledging $5 a month helps us grow. We're always taking your questions and comments via email at editor at WeAreLibertarians.com. If you're new to the program, we catch up for the first 20 minutes or so and then dive deep into analyzing current events and society from a libertarian perspective. This show is for adults by semi-adults, so please be warned the language is strong and offensive. Praise be to Allah. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're live streaming to the big Facebook page. So there's going to be a lot of strangers watching tonight. So, uh, they're sure to hate all of us as all of our Facebook fans do. Cat, let's keep the anti-Semitism to a minimum today. Right. Sorry. All sorry. Right. Yes. That, and uh, the Taylor Swift, which is arguably worse. <laughs> that voice you hear and that face that you see is one Gregory Lins. How are you, Greg? I'm doing wonderful, buddy. How are you feeling? I'm grumpy today. Are you grumpy? I'm, I'm you don't a, seem it. I'm in a bad mood. I'm grumpy. Are you? You don't save it at all. I couldn't tell. I've been grumpy for about three hours now. Why? No we've, reason. Wait, we've been hanging out for the past three hours. Yeah. I don't know. Totally not. It has nothing to do with you. Just for whatever reason, like about two to three hours ago, Kat and Agnos, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. How are you besides grumpy? I just got. I got. I just got grumpy today. I don't know. Huh. Interesting. So I'm not in my I'm not in my normal jovial mood. Are you are you in a uh, exhausted, irritable mood where your you know your grump your your aunt Donna might be you know doing some things to it's, the associate minister? It's possible. I've 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 just I think I'm worn out. So mm. I'm just, just be- worn out. Have I seemed like a, a a bitch today? No. Um. You've put up with our <laughs> hangout session today quite well. We uh, Spankle has never seen SpongeBob. Neither have I. Oh well. I mean, it'd be creepy if we had, because we're older. Yeah. Oh, what you know did what you? I, mean? I showed him about ten episodes. They're like eight minutes each. What did you think? I I, I thought it was funny. It, it explains. Quite it explains Cat, who is twenty. She is, it, she is SpongeBob. Mm-hmm. She is basically. If you want to know what Cat is like in real person, she is basically SpongeBob with a little bit of Patrick to her. Uh, I don't. Th- so I'm real, just really. I know, I know anno- SpongeBob. I'm really annoying, loud, and stupid. Yes. I mean, no, no. <laughs> Not at all. Huh? <laughs> uh, You're laying it on a little thick. Natalie, Natalie uh, Straw and Agnos uh, just Stroh. commented. Uh, she said, uh, hi, best friends. Hey, so, how are you, Natalie? Thanks for watching. Hey, Stephanie says, bah, I've seen SpongeBob and I'm an old lady. Point taken. Yeah. It's a great show. But it's for classic. a dude, it's creepy. It's it's very it's a double standard. I I don't feel like that it's creepy if you're a dude and you watch SpongeBob. It's just it missed us. You're I'm 33. You're 31. Yeah. And so it just was kind of one of those. It was like right behind you. I was aware of it. I just didn't watch it. You know, and I wasn't so much a cartoon person either. Either. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I, I, I wasn't either. I was against you know the public funding of uh, PBS, so I didn't watch. I was a libertarian. <laughs> I was very libertarian, pure at an early age. Well, your dad made <laughs> like, you watch what? Oh, we watched fire. We did watch Firing Line all the time, like on Saturdays. Explain over what that and over. is to young cat. Firing Line. It ran twenty nine years on PBS. <laughs> As a founder of the National Review, William F. Buckley, he did a show not unlike this, but he, he would debate an expert each week or a panel of experts each week. And host a discussion, very mm-hmm. all policy minded, all like economists, PhDs, culturally important people. Um, I mean, really, really, he was a who's who. The Hoover Institution has archived if you all all the episodes, you can go watch every year. Yeah, the backlog. and they're they're amazing because you know you one thing that because of that because of watching so many of those growing up was that it's the I was very aware early on that societies just we do we go round and round and round and round right. and they're the it's different actors but it's the exact same important questions exactly right. right yeah but he was the actually the longest uh serving host of a television show in american history yeah 29 years we are we are huge buckley fans uh he was a libertarian but he he self-described as a libertarian but he was um again the founder of the national review not not somebody that libertarians in this day and age would claim 
as a libertarian. Would right, be. and like that kind, of, that style of libertarianism that's like more modern, where it's very, very much more voluntarist. You know, voluntary exchange wouldn't have ever caught on or gained traction mm-hmm. in that era. Right. Like, whereas it's watered down Rand Paul libertarianism that yeah. like he was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then you know his views changed because communism was perceived as this existential threat to all of humanity. Absolutely. And then his Roman Catholicism really, you know, he he essentially considered communism versus like a you know. Amer- Western style individualism, the exact same argument ver- as atheism versus um, a religion, organized religion, hmm. Christianity on a different level. Hmm. So, uh, so Kat introduced me to SpongeBob instead. <laughs> yes. Yeah, our, our childhood experiences were radically different. Yeah. Well, I grew up walking in parades from an early age. Did you? Yes. You were a snowflake from the beginning? I was, yeah. How did you do in Pride as a kid? <laughs> um, Surprisingly, when I was a kid, that was not around in Indiana. Is it in Elkhart? Uh, Do they have any confirmed gays? Well, probably a few. Um, (laughs) Most of the kids that I suspected are now out. Oh, good. uh, Do you shame them? No, it's funny. A lot of the guys that I dated. (laughs) Yeah. What? Nothing? I told you about this. So What happened? Your track record is a guy that made chemical weapons. Oh, weird. Made chemical (laughs) weapons, and then you flipped a bunch of guys to gay? Yeah. I mean, it's not like they were born Social like that. Social terrorism. No, <laughs> right? No, I'm just kidding. But um, <laughs> there, were, there was the anagnos factor. <laughs> it right, was an yeah. environmental factor. I don't understand. It's just like they chose to be something that the whole world hates because I'm so awful. So, well, is so it, hopefully upsetting. That, I mean, luckily that's never you know caused you to question anything about your personality or yourself. Right, right. So just to recap, I'm in a terrible mood today. Yeah. Uh, what are you, and you're still in an upset... <laughs> Upset mood? No, no. Just a, Are you thinking about? I was making a joke at her at poor cat's expense. <laughs> so, it wasn't funny. Didn't land. Ooh, I'm kidding. I'm sorry. I'm this, sorry. Oh my! You know what I'm going to do? This is your fault. <laughs> I'm going to put a gif of me body slamming you <laughs> <laughs> on my Twitter. Perfect uh, entry to the next segue. Yeah, yeah. I, I've got to tell you, I don't like Donald Trump. I was against Donald Trump through the entire campaign. I, th- I think he's going to go down as one of the worst, most corrupt presidents of all time. Uh, I do concede that he's never really had a chance. I don't think that he was ever given a fair shake. Hell, his own party didn't give him a fair shake right. from the beginning. I think he's uh, deplorable uh, ethically <gasps> and morally. And uh, But I also don't buy that he colluded with the Russians to commit treason. I think that if CNN can find a Redditor who posted a GIF, then you'd think that they could find somebody who would leak some sort of substantial smoking gun evidence that he committed treason. Exactly. Or that anybody around him committed treason. Um, But... And treason has got to be properly defined. Did anyone do something that undermines the United States' existence? No. But my point is, I wake up every day, and at least once a day... I laugh at Donald <laughs> Trump being president. Aren't you glad? There, <laughs> it could have been crooked Hillary. <laughs> Listen, we got Neil Gorsuch, who you know wrote for a Cato Journal at once upon a time, sitting on the Supreme Court. So mass we, outrage too on his opinions. Have you seen it? No, I haven't. You would have thought that he was Clarence Thomas in the angry black man, you know, sexually harassing women. They hate his mind. Good. <laughs> when a bunch of communists don't like uh, the exactly. Supreme Court justice, I'm all for it. Exactly. Uh, so, so, so that I count among. The, the good reasons for having him and uh but he just <laughs> he's just such a shit lord he, he's he is like 4chan is in the white house and as as uh listen i'm not an but uh as someone who who just doesn't like government and wants to overthrow the government we couldn't have a better guy in there. He, he, I was trying to tell Sam Goldstein that from the beginning. I said, Sam, you could not think of a better representative to embody the case against government than having him win. He would be the greatest achievement by libertarians in history should they elect him. Because then it's simply, well, do you really want Trump to make your decisions? Right. I mean, he's a nutcase. But, I, d- I mean, as libertarians, don't we kind of want a nutcase in the White House? <laughs> I mean, it's a hard <laughs> sell until you experience the downsides. You know what I mean? People don't. Right. People, people won't change their behavior until it's. It's like someone that has you know discovers they have health issues and then they go on a weight loss journey and start a a group and a and a therapy group and, and advertise all their walking habits and you know all of a sudden are keto. <laughs> you know, but it's, it takes that kind of crisis event to for behavior to change. And I think Donald Trump is really going to. 
he's the best friend of libertarians in that respect. Yeah, Stephanie on our Facebook Live makes a good point. Mm -hmm. Isn't it beneficial in that executive power will be reduced by the time that he's out of office? Oh, it's the best case for federal or the best you know argument for federalism I've ever seen. Right, we put a nut job in the White House. Winning. We have a guy who is the president of the United <laughs> States who woke up Sunday morning and said, "You know what?" This gif of me <laughs> body slamming the most influential TV news network. Formerly. Seems like a good idea for me to post this. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was great. He, he attack, but he protect. Well, I love that meme. I feel like I've seen that meme before. Was that, has it been around for I don't now? know. I just saw it, you know, because 4chan lost their minds. Every single top post was, is this our guy? And then him tackling <laughs> CNN. Right. Well, I feel like I've I've seen it before. That's because it was Donald Trump in the ring. That's why you've no, seen it the, before. No, the, but the CNN part, oh. like the meme. I've seen it before. So part of me is like, I think is that this was around by the campaign, but it didn't like because there were so many Trump gifts and right. memes. I mean, it was mimetic warfare. They beat the CIA. Well, here's the thing. I'm like, maybe <laughs> they really did. Trump, like that came out. Maybe he uses 4chan, and that's where he gets his policy. Well, he definitely from. uses 4chan. Yeah. You don't think that taking a picture with a taco bowl in his office on Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> And putting it out on Twitter was inspired by a 4chan comment. Like, he didn't come up with that on his own because that was the most outrageous shit post I have ever seen. Hey, you know, there's a big conspiracy about somebody that we hold near and dear to our hearts here. We are libertarians that uses 4chan. You know who it is? Who? Taylor Swift. Oh, God. <laughs> she is there. She's the goddess. Every single national socialism thread is a picture of her as the perfect oh, yeah. Aryan. No, there's <laughs> seriously, there's a huge like, oh, yeah. conspiracy theory that she uses 4chan. Like, there's like. A How picture could you of not? Lines and something. It's the most. Fun, like, I don't. I mean, it, granted, it desensitizes you to everything. Right. But I laugh so hard at certain things. I can't. Like the two scoops when the president got two scoops of ice cream and Stephen Colbert lost his mind and oh, like, started yeah. screaming. And now that <laughs> that image of him screaming is like the reaction of everyone on the alt right. It's fantastic. Uh, <laughs> Joe Scarborough being all red screaming. Mika Brzezinski being all red because she can't stop bleeding. Uh. <laughs> That's another one. <laughs> <laughs> no. But then, you know what? He changed the conversation because everything was about Republican failure on yeah. health care. One tweet. Not a oh, yeah. It's one the tweet perfect. about a bleeding He does it lift. all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's the perfect way he, to get. He manipulates the press. Like, it's oh, yeah. like he literally makes them dance. He, he gets he gets out of these jams with like health care, and then everybody goes. <laughs> then he on jumps in a Mack truck and acts like he's running over leftists, <laughs> <laughs> having a grand old time. And it's part of me is just like, I'm disgusted that this is our president. I'm disgusted that we have somebody who has such low moral values in a place of honor. We couldn't. I watched having John, that I, feeling with politicians. I watched, but the, see, I watched John Adams this week, and I'm just like. John Adams, what an amazing human being. George Washington, an amazing human being. Thomas Jefferson, an amazing human being. And at the same time, I'm laughing my ass off at a gif. <laughs> so it's, it's of very him, silly. Of him clotheslining CNN. Right. Is someone commenting? Uh, you seem distracted. We seem like we have an audio problem. But still, I, so, so yeah, I am just, uh, I don't, Mortified I'm, I'm just conflicted about Donald Trump because here's the thing is history whitewashes things. So John Adams whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I am literally shaking right now. History multiculturalism thing, right. I guess you could say. Or it makes them more I won't say vanilla, but something that tastes and looks the same color as vanilla. You know, it it makes them more mild because John Adams and Thomas Jefferson Jefferson was Adams vice president. Jefferson, through a representative named Callahan that owned his newspaper, had the newspaper write editorials and news stories alleging that Adams was a hermaphrodite. Right. Oh, they, yeah. The Republican Party had bought, like, you know, and so then at the, then Adams started alleging that he was sleeping with his slaves in the press, in an op-eds. Turns out that was true with Sally Hemings, you know. Right. But, um, you know, we we have these, we history makes us think that it was the high-minded commentary and civic duty, and but politics has been the same forever. Mm -hmm. It's just that it's so crude by calling someone low energy and having tiny hands and right. <laughs> little Marco. <laughs> little Marco. Yeah, so uh, I just – I find it all to be uh, entertaining and funny, and uh, here's, here's my take on CNN, okay? CNN is the my, – my news of choice when it comes to the cable news shows, but uh, if something Still? If something is breaking, then I go on CNN. Of course. Like, I, it, it, they've gone way too overboard on the Russia stuff, but – 
In fact, having to fire people. Uh, it, absolutely. You know, Jake Tapper's still my boy. I love Jake Tapper. You have. <sighs> I have had a long standing man crush on Jake His Tapper. Thank you for listening to We Are Libertarians. <laughs> yeah, right. But, uh, TV news isn't journalism, okay? No. It is. If you want to talk about news, I don't really know what news you get from CNN other than propagandic rehashing of the same three to four top stories of the day. Uh, and, and all these TV news stations are the same. And if you look at local TV news, it's literally just what bleeds leads. And TV news, uh, for, for me, I, I, I was done with TV news as a news source and as a journalistic entity in 2007 when I was working as a reporter for a local talk news radio station. Was it WXNT? WXNT, and I was working with our good friend Abdul Hakim Shabazz, who's on our list, but we'll get past it. We'll explain that later. Um uh, and uh, we were covering a we were covering a contentious marriage race in 2007, and the Democrat was going for his third term, and he had uh, millions in the bank at that point. It was August before the election. The challenger was this unknown Republican with fifty thousand dollars in the bank. I mean, he he just wasn't well funded at all. He was a Total nobody. It was almost like a giveaway for all the work he'd done in getting to that point in right. the fill-in. Right. He, he was a Marine, and he's he's a wonderful— Like Todd Young? Yeah. No. He was a, <laughs> yeah. He, uh, he's a great guy. Greg Ballard was, was the guy that was the Republican challenger, really uh, uh, a good acquaintance of mine. I, I, don't, I wouldn't say that we're friends. He's a really, like, not poli- political politician. Absolutely. Not a politician in any way, shape, or form. He was a great caretaker of the city of Indianapolis. Um, but— he ended up – he was speaking, and so no money. Everybody expects Peterson, the Democrat, to win. Peterson gives this contentious budget address about how he's raising taxes to fund public safety, and Ballard in the public comments gives his reply. And afterwards, I'm walking out with one of the Fox 59 reporter girls, uh, clearly hired for her journalistic integrity. I don't know what you mean. Uh, uh, she was a leggy young, young thing. I was single. She was single. It was meant to be. Uh, no idea what her name was. Uh, or is. And this is before you could slide a DM in on a real quick search. It's exactly right. There was, you know, it, it was waiting hard. for her to answer your AOL. You That's have no me. idea how hard oh, it was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, was waiting. <laughs> I slid in my instant message DM. Yeah. I friendstered her so hard. Oh, God. Um, so, it, yeah, I mean, we didn't, really, we didn't even have cell phones back then. You had to, like, have eye contact yeah. and, like, you know, social skills. Yeah, we did broadcast at each other. We had a two-way <laughs> conversation. And so... The telegraph. I, exactly. I asked her, <laughs> what are you guys going to cover of the Challenger? And she said, oh, nothing. He, he hasn't spent any ad dollars on the station, so we're not going to give him free revenue. Oh. And I looked at her, and I go, you realize you're a news station, right? And she goes, I'm not happy about it. It's the editor's decision. And that reporter was gone within a month. I mean, but it, it just, to me, was just so striking that um, – That's the way it works. That's, that's the way it works. That's when I realized, oh, I know that the Republicans and the Democrats are corrupt, but now the industry that I want to be a part of is possibly corrupt too. We're all fucked. And, uh, yeah, then for the most part. runs yeah. for president. Then a, then a man. And calls it like it is. With a red hat that says, make America great again. Like, forget about the Vladimir Putin uh, photo shoot of him in the woods. Like, yeah. Like, oh, oh shirtless stuff. riding. Yeah. A, yeah riding yeah. into the sunset on his horse. So, forget about that. We don't need that. We have hats. <laughs> so, to me, TV news is mostly propaganda. And, and when you focus on what bleeds and, and you lead with that... You end and, – and there's a book on my bookshelf called The Culture of Fear that talks a lot about this. And the, and the movie Bowling for Columbine, say what you want about, uh, Michael Moore. Uh, about Michael Moore, that's a great movie when it comes to the climate of fear that TV news instills in our society. And it is partially because, A, that's what we choose to watch. That's what we support. If everybody watched We Are Libertarians and listened to We Are Libertarians and shared it with their friends, then, uh, you know, that, that, that'd be great. But we're a long-form, nerdy program about the in-depth. We're substance people. We're substance people. Right. We're spending three hours on these topics a week, and people don't generally want to hear that. They want to. They want to hear. Okay, uh, and I think it's partly human nature. We want to see. Oh, the it car absolutely. Crash you know, yeah, it's because it, it's different. We want to look in the face of death and say that could be us, right? As opposed to 
Um, let's get to topic number one. Uh, we really need to form a commission on traffic safety. Well, Donald Trump, in, in many ways, I've always felt has been the uh, – he is the politician that modern politics has deserved. He's like the culmination of the trend that's been happening. Yeah, he is, he is something that they built, and now they can't handle it. And he, you know, he saved media. From a profit perspective. Yeah. I don't know if you've noticed, but all of them are for the first time in a very long time profitable. Yeah. Because of him. And so that's actually something that a Russian journalist wrote an individual blog post about last fall, about what you don't understand, journalists, is what's coming. Right. Mm -hmm. Is we know that we that Vladimir Putin owns us because if we don't cover whatever he does, we won't sell newspapers and we won't get paid views and then we lose our jobs. He knows he owns us, we know he owns us, and we can't do a damn thing about it. Right. And it's a yeah. sad situation because you'd love it if – but, I mean, even the BBC isn't – like in, in where they have publicly funded news that isn't supposedly bound by profit motive, mm -hmm. like – and it's supposed to have journalistic integrity, mm -hmm. it still isn't pure because it's an institution. And people run institutions, and they have biases. Right. Yeah, see, and that's the thing. I feel like there is no such thing as unbiased news. Right. I just don't, because every human has an opinion. Mm -hmm. Like, Absolutely. And it could be as much as you, you know, just your body language giving the opinion could, or yeah. giving your bias. Most or... communication is nonverbal. You, exactly. You, you were talking about somebody that it, you go to school with, they're in the journalism field, and they were just like, they're always down the road, but then... Oh, yeah. ton of kids that I go to school with are all in the journalism programs. And... Well, you were going to do it until you decided you didn't want to, right? Yeah, I was in that track, and I, I guess I still consider myself in that track because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just a different... You want to do media, just not necessarily journalism. Yeah, because, I mean, my own personal opinion is I don't want to strictly study um, a dying thing. Right. And I mean, it'll never go away. It's just not an easy way to get your foot in. And the way that they're teaching, a lot of schools are teaching it is the traditional media. Like we spend all of our time learning about Nellie Bly and all these great people, which is awesome. But at the same time, Nellie Bly, God, Who's Nellie, a, Bly? Nellie Bly was one of the first female journalists who like traveled around the world and was mm -hmm. like this uh, intrepid reporter in the early days of, of journalism that kind of every young female reporter aspires to. You know, think of uh, Mr. Smith goes to Washington. The female, For journalism. the yeah. female, the female character in that who's like George. Blah, blah, blah. That was, it's kind of like the Nellie Bly, yeah. basically. I, I, but it's you know, people are so used to that, and I think a lot of the kids that I go to school with, and I just think in general are very. You know, oh, I'm unbiased. I'm here for the truth. Where the hard hitting facts, whatever. But then on you know election night, 2016, I know this is biased, but how could the blah 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 blah? You know. Yeah. So they can't even restrict themselves when it's actually chat. Like when they face the actual threat, mm -hmm. everything goes away. Well, All their yeah. principles Rachel, and integrity. Rachel Maddow, she's she's a journalist, correct? I wouldn't call her a journalist personally. But I'd does she say call she's herself? a commentator? Yeah, a commentator and analyst. Okay. Well, I was just yeah. Okay, but like I would call Brett Bayer or uh, Brian Williams before he started lying about where he was <laughs> as someone that's a a true journalist. It, it depends on it depends on how you define journalism. You could define what we do as journalism, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. what we do certainly falls under the First Amendment rights we are absolute journalists in that sense mm -hmm. and that we have every right to say exactly what we think and we have a right to criticize and discuss public figures mm -hmm. we have a first amendment right to criticize people who decide to step into the public arena uh and, and so in that respect you know we would qualify as journalists but are we investigative journalists absolutely right. not you know we're not out there and, and i don't think that a lot of media does investigative journalism and that's why so many of these sites, so much of these news sites are aggregators that – like Huffington Post or The Blaze or – That's the thing is the trend. Once someone saw that aggregation, could, you could monetize it and like content curation. Right. It was so much easier and less effort and required so many fewer resources. Right. Everyone then – we became really susceptible to um, really sampling bias because then we were so reliant on the very few that did it. You know, I would say The Intercept, uh, Glenn Greenwald's yeah. um, website is one of the last – it's probably – I would say it's a gold standard of investigative sure. reporting for political – you know, worldly affairs yeah. and pol politics. Well, and here's the thing. Um, you know, not just at my school, but I think all student media. My biggest problem is them pushing journalism has to be unbiased, blah, 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 really pushing that. There, Like I said, there's no such thing as unbiased news. Look in the you know the the end game the CNN the Fox News all these things extremely biased and so that's one of the reasons I left the department is because why don't we just say like yeah 
All news is biased. Well, right. Then you have every commentator you see on the nightly news comes from a political background. Exactly. From, from a chosen side. Yeah. Exactly. And, the, and it's rare to see someone – like Brett Bayer, I consider pretty rare. I think he does as mm-hmm. good a job as he can. You know, yeah. Granted, he's still an employee of Fox News, so there has to be – That's the issue. Yeah. But, I mean, as far – even though he's on Fox News, I still think he does just about as damn good a job as sticking – you know, holding people accountable and trying to just take it from the perspective of what actually happened that's right. provable. And and that's my thing is, you know, just, just tell it like it is. Stop painting this, oh, journalism is one of the most noble. prestigious, noble careers. We're always fighting for the truth. Yeah, we were 100 years ago with – or however many and years ago with Melly Bly. We just remember it that way. Yeah. yeah. Well, there is a documentary that uh, Netflix just did on the Hulk Hogan trial. Gawker. And Gawker. That was really interesting. I forget what it's called. Like, Another great meme, Hulk Hogan, Hollywood leg dropping CNN. <laughs> or no, Gawker, sorry. <laughs> it, is the, it is like free speech or something. And you watch the documentary, and it just is the, it is just the most self-serving, like... Virtue signal. Like they're they're talking about a website that is publishing like Hulk Hogan, a private video of a man having sex with uh, Bubba the Love Sponge. With Bubba wife. the Love Sponge's wife, voluntarily offered. They all three. It was an adult arrangement that was nobody's business except the three of them. It doesn't. It, in my opinion, it does no public good for that to be on on the internet Mm -hmm. and they're just sitting there like these people who have the nerve to like sit there like they're just like you know so many journalists have died in in pursuit of journalism and you know it's just so tough to get up and do this every day and we just have the right to publish porn on our website if we want it's like don't you dare titles us to whatever we want you're not ernie pyle okay don't don't invoke ernie pyle the great world war ii reporter that died in in the the pacific or i think he died in the atlantic maybe Mm -hmm. uh in the middle of war to like it's it's just it's it's banning the amount of um superiority mm-hmm. that so many of these people have over what they do when really all you're doing is I'm a just, journalist. you're just taking news that the Washington Post and the New York Times produce and then repurposing it and putting fuck in the headline for clickbait. That's exactly right. Yeah, it's like BuzzFeed of every type of content exactly. out, like, you know, outlet. And I think it's so funny that these news sources consider themselves news. For example, um, yesterday, did you guys hear about the Rob Kardashian drama? Mm. You yes. Know that is? Yep. You see that? Basically, he caught his whatever girlfriend, the fiance, f- fiance, mother of his uh, child, Black China. Greg. What's her name? Her name is Black, Black China. China. Why, don't you Why couldn't it be White China? Go <laughs> Google Black China right now, please. Um, c- whatever uh, caught her cheating. So he posted all of her nudes, I guess, on Instagram. Then his Instagram account got taken down for violating the terms. I was of hacked, and he may get charged with revenge porn. Exactly, and then posted oh, like yeah. these Snapchat real- videos. But she like liked the videos, so of course, like all these like. Hard-hitting news sites are like, so-and-so, Rob Kardashian might get charged with revenge porn. But really, because Black China liked the third Instagram post on Instagram and then Why wouldn't she? That's it. how he became famous is because his sister did that. Yeah. And so it's just, it's just funny that these people have the audacity to compare themselves, like Spangle said, to um, you know Ernie Pyle and Nellie Bly and right. these incredible actual Pi- pioneers. Pioneers. Well, you know what's funny is like I've there's a growing trend to re- want to require a journalism undergraduate degree, almost a journalist license. Like in Brazil, you have to attend a journalism school. Really? Mm-hmm. See, and part of me is like, uh, maybe I shouldn't have changed my major. Because uh, did you see it? Black China. <laughs> China. Now there is a and I <laughs> we are libertarians. She and your sorority. <laughs> oh, we, we are libertarians. Retweeted it today, July seventh. What oh. is it today? July sixth. Uh, and there was a woman who took a tweet from Trump about China and the Rob Kardashian tweet about black China, and they say almost kind of the, the same, exact same thing. thing. This like negative comment about China, <laughs> and she's like, "Is anybody else concerned that the president is saying exactly what Rob Kardashian's saying on Twitter?" It was so it's very Hilarious. funny. Hilarious. Well, copy yeah. the best. Yeah, right. exactly right. But so yeah, I just I just think that we're just so caught up in you know, like I said, journalism being this noble profession where. Right. It's, you know, we're, we always learned in, in my classes that the number one important thing of journalism is storytelling and, um, you know, breaking down the walls and right. having tr- complete transparency and being the liaison between whatever p- administration and the public. Yeah. But now it's just so, and it goes both sides, of course, like Fox News is just as biased as MSNBC, right. but it's just when all of them are, there's no way to not be. 
Well, there's no, how do you because you're, you're still present, you're still selling your product to an American audience and from an American perspective. Like that was a big criticism I had with the Al Jazeera being a affiliate or you know the the media wing of Al Qaeda is. Well, if they're trying to sell. They're in a different market, so mm-hmm. they're going to report the news differently yeah. to their audience than you would in the United States. Mm-hmm. This isn't. The, they're not. They're a private company. It's not the BBC. Yeah. You know, you have to whatever your market is dictates. To, even to the slightest sure. extent, what you cover. Well, mm-hmm. e- even that local Fox affiliate not covering the mayor, it's that they've got, you know, they need profit. <laughs> so, that, that's, and so it, like, they're going to make their coverage demands. And I would say even the BBC, the BBC is, is just because it is public, let's not foolishly assume that it has everybody's best interest at heart. It has the government's best interest at heart, and that isn't always necessarily the best interest of the people. Right, and, the, and they're naturally – their market, like the market for, uh, for BBC News is – more collectivist in nature than in the United States. It's, right. You know, it's a cultural thing. So even the independence doesn't get you can't get away from it because of the more collectivist cultural mindset that is in England than as opposed to the United States. Right. So there's just no real way to ever get truly, you know, get news from a source that is truly independent and in sticking to the facts. You have to get it from all sides. So. Right. This leads us to our first topic tonight, and I, I and, and I think that this is an important topic that isn't covered a lot because we are so concerned with things like the the Russia supposed treason uh, issue. We are we are concerned with Black China and Rob Kardashian that that you don't get these in depth, and that's why We Are Libertarians does what we do. We we try to go in depth and. Uh, what we don't cover in the show, we put into our show notes at wearelibertarians.com on the episode, so you can go and check those out, which are basically like today, tonight's show notes. This is printed front and back. It's literally I printed 23 pages that Greg wrote. And one of them was because it was a BBC timeline, like so that right. I copy and pasted, so that made up. But I, I mean, I wanted, you wanted to have the full history. Yeah. The documents, if you right. will. Right. You have the, the whole documents, and we try to give you as much information about these topics that we explain uh, and give our opinions on because we we know that it is it, a nobody else is out there is putting a libertarian point of view on these things, and what we really try to do is to bring you uh, as close to a non biased covered from look, all angles covered mm-hmm. from all angles, but also knowing that hey we're not we're we're not Republicans trying to shove Trump down your throat we're not Democrats trying to shove Trump out of your throat. We're just trying to give you facts so you can make up your mind. And the North Korean situation is incredibly tense, and it is incredibly complex, and there's a lot of different players. And uh, the closest that you can get is 60 Minutes did a piece, and it was eight minutes long, and it was fantastic. And you watched that piece. This was about a month ago on North Korea, and it is so tense there, and it is so incredibly uh, – scary i was scared I, I i wasn't scared like really like i'm not gonna die like i wasn't mortally scared or whatever at the end of the day but it's just like oh this is way more tense than i thought it was it is and it it goes back to we take this so lightly because cnn and all these big maybe not cnn but all of these you know north Major korea media is a meme. it's a right meme now yeah like right. the acme air force you know where they're going around right. on the carousel in their airplanes 21 fails of kim jong-un and it's like a picture of him tripping well exactly. he's, he's a cartoon character exactly how's that guy gonna hurt us he's a little fat kid <laughs> i mean he does himself no favors and that the only diplomatic relations he wants with the united states is dennis rodman right, right. i mean so it isn't all like us putting it on him he plays into it you know, the worm isn't who you send over for right. serious business. <laughs> Donald Trump <laughs> would send the worm. Uh, honestly, he's – if that's your line of you, – you know, beggars can't be choosing. <laughs> right. you, you take what – you know, what's available, and when it's Dennis Rodman, and he's a great rebounder, and maybe he can rebound the relationship with North Korea. I'm just saying. So we had uh, a more more an escalation, than, and what they seem to do is they just seem to – Escalate, escalate, escalate. There's an ever series, uh, and, and their goal is to have nuclear weapons that can reach the California coast. Correct. Is it not? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And like they, their ballistic missile test—that's what really scared everybody on July Fourth. Was it has the potential to reach Alaska? Can you explain what an ICBM? Because people hear the ICBM term and they don't quite know what. It so is. it's a ballistic missile that you would put a nuclear warhead in, a hydrogen bomb, mm-hmm. and then. It uh, does long range, so it can attack from long range. And the United States has for years tried to develop like a protective shell to combat such an attack. But at the end of the day, any type of technology where you're anticipating the path of a rocket, a missile, is going to have a high failure rate. 
And yeah. so this now it is it was it was funny in 2006 I think when they fired the one off and it barely left land. Right. You know, there were a lot of failures. It was straight Wiley e. Coyote like right. mm-hmm. it, it just played into the hilarity of Kim Jong Un. Um, in his threats, but now right. it's a little more serious because their technology's caught up. Yeah, and the, this comes right off of the heels of Otto Warmbier. Warmbier. I don't. I don't know how to say his name. Uh, Cat read all about him. She knows. Yeah. Kat, oh yeah. Otto. Otto went to North Korea and did what? Yeah. So he's a. Uh, he was a college student from Ohio, Cincinnati, Cincinnati, yeah. and he went to Chile, capital of the world. Yeah, and he went to the University yeah. of Virginia, I believe. Yep. Uh-huh. UVA. And, yeah, and he uh, went to China for a trip. And then I guess China, a big thing that China does is have, like, these trips, I guess, for Americans to visit North Korea. Yeah, anyone is eligible if you get cleared by the chi- the Politburo, the Chinese party. Yeah. And I was reading online, I guess they're pretty safe. Like, they do a they do a good job of it. I mean, because North Korea is not going to bite the hand that feeds it. So, like, the Chinese right. know there'll be repercussions if an American gets hurt on one of these trips. Right. And so he went on this trip, and, uh, like, it was a fine trip. I think he was with, like, 15 other U.S. citizens. And uh, one of the nights, they were in this, like, hotel bar um, kind of deal, I guess, in North Korea um, that was that stays open later than the normal ones. And they were just – the report said they were, like, eating and drinking into the early morning. So Being college kids. So early morning, meaning like they're up until 3 a.m. partying. Yeah, that's, right. that's how I took it. And uh, I guess one of the biggest laws they have in North Korea is like the propaganda law, I guess, against stealing it. Yeah. So you can't steal. Well, it's all state-owned goods. Yeah. So I guess he, and they got the security footage of him, but he just went over to like a poster. like, And it basically, I think, I can't remember exactly, but the report said that it said something like, the state loves Kim Jong-un, something like that. Mm-hmm. And he ripped it down and he... I, I think he put it against the wall like he was going to take it. Mm-hmm. And, like, a few North Korean officials went over, tapped him on the shoulder, and he just walked with them. And all the kids, they got the testimonies of the kids who were there, and they basically said, like, yeah, we were joking that that was the last time we were going to see him, but that was actually the last time we were ever going to see him. It's not quite as funny now. Right. This isn't Team America. And, you know, he they said that he wasn't, he didn't look scared or anything when he was being walked out. He was, like, half smiling, like smirking. So, and then he oh, was Oh, boy, do held, I know that smirk. Right. Yeah. <laughs> We saw your yearbook picture. That's yeah, right. Yeah, we saw your yearbook picture. But, she uh, immediately goes, Greg looks just like a bully. Yeah, you Holy look looks. like uh, from Billy Madison. Odoyle oh, 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 rules. I rules. saw that comment. <laughs> like I wasn't a bully. Hip-hop. I bully bullies, but I don't. I'm, I was non-aggression principal, so right, unless right. I get bullied, then it's full war. Libertarian from the womb, so of course. I have, uh, you know, but if you are bullying someone I like, you're fucked. Yeah, no, I feel that. But um, he basically, he was held there, and um, I... The report I read said that the Obama ad- administration told his parents in the United States to have a low profile about this case, which I thought was interesting. Yeah, I know. I I feel like they were trying they were trying to establish diplomatic relations, but it just it always fails with them. Like exactly, it and I guess fails. I guess his dad wanted him to be like a uh, part of the diplomat like diplomacy mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah, right. But, um, the response team. Right, but the Obama administration said no, and then he basically. Was over there, and then I guess he got really sick. They said There's, he contracted some. Yeah, they said contracted, and he went into a coma, right? Yeah, I, I looked. Yeah. It's I forget it was called like gall, bolin, something like that. Some weird bacterial infection, I guess. Oh that, really? Yeah. That it's affects bacterial? the eyelids, apparently. Most, That's what mostly, the they think he said. was tortured. They think that he was he was tortured and beaten. Because he a gave, state department spy. Yeah. Because he gave a response, like a testimony, and he pleaded guilty to everything, and he said he was stealing it for a secret society that he was trying to enter at the UVA, mm-hmm. and then for um, entry into the CIA. But I guess the school... That's their primary recruiting source, that and Yale. Really? Was really? It... Yale's where it was founded, the Skull and Bones Society. Right. They're almost all bonesmen, but then UVA's number two. Really? Silence of the Lambs, um, that's FBI's biggest, one of their biggest is the University of Virginia. Interesting. So wait, Skull of Bones? Skull and Bones Skull is the and society Bones the CIA seeds. was about... Uh, Founded in. Really? Mm-hmm. William F. Buckley was a skull and bone, a bonesman and uh, CIA agent in Mexico City. Wow. Look at that. Huh. Yeah. No, so, uh, trust me. Wait until you get into the Kennedy stuff and the CIA stuff. You're going to get so more woke. Wait till so, you watch the Bilderberger or the right. Bohemian Grove yep. documentary all about Alex Jones. Jones. Yeah. Right. Moloch. But uh, basically, and then he, his body was returned. He was still alive. And then he, he, was, died. he was alive when he was transported. Yeah, and then he died six days later, I guess, in Ohio. So they yeah. knew it was a deteriorating condition. Then. Yeah, they, they didn't want him right to over. die over there. Which I thought, I think is interesting. Um, I read the whole, all of the reports. It's, um, it's very interesting. How so? 
So the uh, circumstances around it, or like why it happened? I guess why it happened because, and I was talking to Spangle about this before you got here. I I have mixed feelings on it because I feel like, you know, all these, the parents basically said that he, um, the Chinese, like set Americans up for this and they know how dangerous it is, but they prey on Americans who want to, you know, who are it's their only bargaining chip. Really? Right. But I don't know. I just think, you know, staying up late, college kids at a hotel, go and, you know, rip a souvenir off the wall. That's what gets you. Yeah. So in a, you know, communist tyrannical state. Exactly. Defaming the propaganda they use to reinforce, you know, right. and of mind course, control on citizens usually will be a you right. know, threat. And yeah. of course, I don't like agree with it, obviously, but part of me is like, okay, he knew the risk being over there. He knew the rules, mm-hmm. and he did it anyway. He flaunted that, you know. And, you know, I'm and an he was American. Smirking as he was walking out, right? Which, of course, they hate. Um, also, I thought it was interesting how, and I was telling Spangle this, if this was such, because it seems like a lot of people are trying to make it out as, oh my gosh, he, what is, what is the name of the reporter who was kidnapped? Lisa Lang. Yeah, my sister met her, but um. They made it out to seem like something like that, but they snuck in. They snuck in, so it's kind of very different circumstances. Like they, she was on Channel One, okay? Yeah, she's a national treasure. Yeah, so I don't know. It's just I don't. Obviously, I don't agree with it because anybody who agrees with it is part of the the problem, the, the craziness. But at the same time, I'm like, part of me is like, okay, you know the rules, you know the risk going in. Truth, truthfully, you probably shouldn't have even investigated going there on a uh, you know Chinese state sponsored trip. Right. But Realistically, at the same time, you were warned the, up front. You knew the consequences. Well, and this is the first of the group. I'm a, I'm assuming we don't hear of this happening a lot. Never, really? never. So part of me is like, okay, these trips are relatively safe as mm-hmm. long as you follow the rules. Correct. And you have to know their rules because it's their world, their culture is different than ours. Right. But, and 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 if if you but if they upset China, they lose their one access point to the world for food. Exactly. It's and, like going to. Um, I'm trying to think of an example. It's like going somewhere and upsetting their culture, and obviously you don't agree with their culture. It'd be like going to Saudi Arabia and walking around being a missionary. Exactly. Yeah. You know, like we maybe don't not that personally... antagonistic, but... Right. And it's like we, you know, obviously don't agree morally, but at the same time, you knew the risks, you knew the rules, you... You flaunted it. You flaunted it. So normally this would be an act of war. I mean, most most nations would... would there would be some sort of retaliation for an American citizen... Or the citizen of another country at the hands of that country's government. Uh, it's just not done. Torture your own people, fine. Or maybe some Muslims. Go for it, is typically the world standard. Don't uh, let women drive. And, you know, you're right. fine. It's, right. But, just share your intelligence with us. Right. But, uh, the, but it takes on a different role when, when you have situations like what, what's happening. And that was right. really a personal story. You don't get human interest stories that... Like and that's what I was so shocked is this was the first time it moved the needle for most Americans about the actuality of the regime, mm-hmm. you know, and what because it is it's so comical. Team America that is everyone's impression of North Korea, right? Right. Like our generation, it's like, oh yeah, I've seen that. Like the puppet, like right? No, the it's interview. a real guy, you know. Like he killed his brother-in-law so he wouldn't be threatened. Ro- you know? right. <laughs> exactly. Like so it's ro- <laughs> boy, if that isn't like the. The four chanization of society, <laughs> right. like it, it, our generation, isn't worried about a communist dictator because they saw Team America, <laughs> <laughs> right. and he sings songs about being lonely. <laughs> he's not. He's a, he's a lovable little fuzzball. That that puppet man, I tell you. Uh, so so really, kind of give us an overview of what what happened, Greg. So uh, the, the missile the missile test changed anything, and they tested it on July fourth. Right, you know, and so Kidding. while I, well, I know they, honestly, like that's the thing is they 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 flaunted their new technological abilities to be able to transport a warhead to the United States coastline potentially mm-hmm. uh, on the Fourth of July, and it's already been a situation where they are really, really the economy is okay for them, like it's not great, but they're not, it's not like they're in the midst of an economic depression anymore, so than they regularly are. Mm-hmm. Um, so d- citizens aren't eating bark off of trees, right? No, not at all, because the Chinese supply them with the majority of their aid. Okay, and up until up until probably the last three years, even as far back I think as 2014, there were discussions about having another inter-Korean summit between the South and North. Well, which has happened from time to time. The, the big motivator for the Chinese to keep them on the line and and basically. Uh, keep them going is that China has a very instant. Uh, ins, uh, there's a lot of instability there, 
and there's social instability social, always social instability and if you had the north korean dictatorship collapse you'd have a humanitarian crisis on the scale of syria at the border of china flooding into both south korea and north korea and uh, especially into china it's really a policy of containment absolutely because if they if they let north korea fail then what ends up happening is they they just can't afford to absorb that many more people they can they can send aid and they can send money, but they can't take the people into their own society. And these are special people to try to assimilate. I mean, yeah. these people are. It's like we were talking. At, was it before the show we were even yes. talking? Like, so these people have been brainwashed. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, one of the defectors did a BBC interview and then had a psychologist to work with him that defected to Great Britain. And he, when, when the psychologist talked about how you know asked him to describe how it would make him feel never seeing his parents again, it, it didn't have any emotional. He had no emotional attachment to his parents right. because of the state. And really, the, you know, the, uh, the, the, the jong Uns, I guess you could say, mm-hmm. um, they are great God. Family. You know, and I didn't know until spring. Yeah, great. <laughs> great people. Yeah, very great Come people. Come from a good family. Yes, talk to great people. <laughs> uh, you know, a little bit, you know, murderous. But other than that, right. yeah. totally fine. They got the white picket fence down. Exactly. Um, but so they're brainwashed. And so they don't have any allegiance to their family members, to their friends. It is entirely to the state. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't realize they'd created their own religion until you mentioned that. Yeah, so Kim Il-sung felt that there were certain parts of Marxist ideology that had failed. And so he created a a new religion called Juche. Juche. And it is spelled J-U-C-H-E if you want to study up more on this. Uh, It is described by the government as Kim Il-sung's – Kim Il-sung was the one that was the grandfather of the current dictator. He was a lot like a Fidel Castro in North Korea right uh, right after World War II. And we'll we'll explain how he was installed in a little bit. But Juche is a philosophy – it is – Kim Il-sung's original, brilliant, and revolutionary contribution to national and international thought. What a hell of a title. I know. No, when we t- jokingly call me dear leader and we use all the terms to like, it is... It, you Supreme Allied Commander of Freedom and Liberty. You, right, right. It is, it is insane. Like, there are a bunch of great North Korean doc- documentaries. And if you watch uh, The Propaganda Game, which is a fantastic documentary, uh, I think it's on Netflix, Under the Sun, which I watched yesterday... Which is basically they, they agreed to do a documentary in North Korea. The North Korean government gave them a script, and then they <laughs> produced the documentary exactly as the, the government wanted them to. So, uh, and you see at one point, like, uh, uh, someone yells, action, and then all the people start walking towards the bus. It's all very staged, but it's, you know, you realize what's going on. You know, it's not like a problem. That is film. the story, is it, watching how orchestrated it is. How orchestrated it is. It has and, to be. And you see in, in all of these, uh, in the daily life of what they want to project to you, is that it is a very united country. It is uh, absolutely madly and passionately in love with uh, Kim Il-sung, especially. The, Great, or the gr- grandfather of Kim Jong-un. The... Right. You know, there was Kim Jong Sun, then, then Il, Il, then Un, and Sun was uh, is revered. And after he died in 1994, Il started really ramping up the the love and affection, and everybody's got to have a photo of him in the house. And you know, it, cult worship or godly cult worship, absolutely almost. cult of personality. You know, we talk about cult of personality in a very light way. Like I've used that term about Ron Paul. For instance, listen, I love Ron Paul. Great guy. Great family. Uh, Listen, I'm here because of Ron Paul, but at the same time, we have a bit of a cult of personality. You can't criticize him, for instance. But in North Korea, everybody worships them. They show school children walking up to the school. They all walk up to a portrait of the Sung family, bow, and then they may enter the school. Uh, And so this is a religion that he developed um, and Sung was born in 1912, and it is a variant of Marxism and Leninism, uh, and it is Korean in character, and it it it, it brings together all of. Uh, it's very communal, obviously, as a communistic. As actually ideology. all Eastern, you know, fil- you know, the Eastern worldviews is, co- is collective, Absolutely. you know, from the collective rather than the individual perspective. And so you are all a big family, mm-hmm. and so the Koreans are the most racist people on the planet. And so part of the ideology that is pushed is that North Koreans specifically are the most superior race on the planet and that everyone everyone from the outside and uh and you know so mixing with other countries or even South Koreans is considered 
you know, not not sinful, but not muddying the bloodline. I- exactly right. Sort of uh, the way the we'll, Greeks are. We'll right. talk about the Free State of Jones <laughs> at, at, towards the end of the program, which is a movie that we all just watched in the last twenty four hours and loved. Where in the Free State of Jones, this guy who had an eighth out. He an eighth of his bloodline was black, and so he couldn't marry a white woman. Mm-hmm. And they had to actually uh, undo it. Yeah, and so you know. Juche and and all these ideologies w- were set out. This is a society, and this is really the last closed society on Earth in, in a mass scale. And it is because he took control of the education system. He took control of the government apparatus. The Soviets backed him. Mm-hmm. The Soviets Implicitly. backed him. 90% of their uh, parliament is from the uh, from the Communistic Party, and then they have the, re- the last 10% are three or four token parties. And, Diversity. And independence, yes. And uh, so, 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 yeah, I mean, it's, it's a very pure uh, country. And because they use that racial superiority and nationalism in all of their uh, – like it is, uh, it is like 1984 in that everywhere you go, driving down the streets, they have – Loudspeakers talking about the, the the you know make today great because you want to honor Kim Il Sung you you uh, don't want to let the Korean people down. There are a lot of, of like the similarities between like the way people, Romans felt about Caesar. Absolutely, you know, and that he was a demigod, and they even started the creating like fake you know fake backgrounds and mythology around him that he was you know half human, half god. Right. Mm-hmm. You know that's what developed, except in a contained society where there is an exposure to yeah. Uh, this is his birth certificate, you know. Like. So, so assimilation for this culture into any other culture would be <sighs> extremely difficult, and the effects of fifty years of brainwashing, of seventy years of brainwashing at this point, uh, will be extremely difficult. And it really turns into something that is a significant problem. It's a closed, again, the last closed society. So we're all very fascinated by it, uh, but. In it, in in watching these documentaries and watching uh, and reading about them, Michael Malice has a great book about. It's like an unauth dear reader, an unauthorized autobiography of Kim Il. No, no, Michael Malice. I, mean, I need public to, apology. Uh, but Michael Malice, uh, really, a uh, guy that I've discovered recently that I think is really sharp. Um, Called dear reader. Dear reader. Of. Yeah. Um, it is it is a fascinating society and a society that we don't quite understand and you can just see in all of these people the it is it is a 1984 type society it's a simulation almost yeah like it's it's almost like a la- a sociology lab experiment to right. an extent in psychological lab experiment because i would have bet anything like let's say like cat for instance if i told you if i told you that i could do like a brainwash, and you would never feel the slightest inkling of loyalty toward your mom and dad. Mm-hmm. I would like that would be impossible to imagine for an American, right? Yeah. Right, and the, these people feel like even through te- like uh, biological testing, nothing registers when they ask them these type of questions. They have removed any type of like tribal or family. In, like instinctual response the, the society is their family, mm-hmm. right? Well, you think of like cult members from the United States. You know what I mean, and how. There a lot of times these women in cults have nothing and mm-hmm. they finally have everything. Yeah. So that might be another factor as well. These people have literally nothing. Well, I mean, I, they, they would know though. They they the thing is though that is in comparison. These people don't have a comparison. They're not allowed to be exposed to outside. That's true. So like what you know for someone that has no point of reference, it is so. And clearly, you're fascinated by this as you've been yawning no. and strolling Instagram I and can't then help it. checking your hair. All right, well, moving on. (laughs) Tell us more about North Korean hairstyles. Um, Incredible. (laughs) Kim Jong-un has the best hairstyle I've ever seen. He's got, like, the middle-parted school shooter fade. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I know, I think it's fascinating to me because it's a hermit kingdom. And, like, if you ever have seen a picture of the Korean uh, uh, Korea at night, North Korea is black completely. No electricity, no light whatsoever. South Korea is lit up like Tokyo. Right. And so it's just a stunning how little separates them. You know, and they want. Or, you know, actually, truth be told, after the Cold War, the majority of Koreans didn't want to have it separated. Mm-hmm. You know, the Soviets got the North, and that was a communist regime, and really just because he could maintain control over the the Korean Peninsula during uh, his the Soviet or right after World War II. But the the United States are the ones who pushed the envelope and wanted to see if democracy would take hold in mm-hmm. the South, 
And so it's just fascinating to see how different they are, and yet they share such a close heritage. In in, in all of these instances, it just is uh, our our drawing of the map, like Sykes Picot in mm-hmm. the Middle East, and then you know drawing lines in Korea, the states. It, everything is coming back to haunt us to, to further generations. Now, y- Ooh, you, you want some coffee? I don't know. Want some, some super male vitality? Yeah. 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 Can girls take it? Uh, there's a super female vitality. Is there? There is, yeah. There's still some in that bottle if you want to get woke. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I was about to say this whole North uh, North Korea versus South Korea thing reminds me of the Berlin Wall. Like mm-hmm, the, exactly, the, East-West West. Germany. And uh, who was it? I think it's Milo Yiannopoulos <laughs> who always says the way that one of the – which is the one that was free? The West. The West. They or The East could tell the – Life was better in the West was because they could hear laughter exactly. on the other side of the wall. Right, that's what he said. And yeah, that's that exposure and like yeah. that. It's it's like a cultural invasion that usually breaks down communism. Mm-hmm. In, in, in the Under the Sun documentary, there's a moment where they're walking into a schoolroom and it's a school and it is stunningly quiet. And you think about an American school where there's so much free expression in the hallways. Right. You know, even if the kids are wearing uniforms, like there is <gasps> it, it, right. It, there is silence in most of these it, it like there's no sound Mm-mm. there's no sound on the streets there's no sound in the hallways of of any building that, i mean it's just it's a that uniformity though is what has allowed them to maintain the power you know because right. re- realistically trying to maintain absolute seclusion among a large population is incredibly difficult right but they have done an un just a fascinating jaw. I hate to say that, but it's really fascinating how they've been able to maintain an ironclad grip on con- uh, you know the mental control of a populace, and then not allow them the slightest exposure to any other worldview. Well, and I think it's because I feel like they've been left alone. Yeah, they're the hermit kingdom. They really like, are. And I mean, why is it that they've been left alone for so long? That's the only way they could control it. And so, mm-hmm. so you had the thirty-eighth. So you had the World War Two end, and so yeah, the Russians got north. Americans wanted to put, try democracy in the South and see if it would work. So you have the 38th parallel that's established. It's a non-occupation zone, mm-hmm. and they're supposed to keep to each other. Mm-hmm. Well, clearly, they need the Russians. You know, communism. It wasn't. We weren't. We weren't enemies at that point necessarily. And so, actually, the uh, Korea was the first proxy war of the Cold War. And so it was basically the two civilizations and worldviews clashing of communism, the Soviet-style uh, communism versus United States Western liberalism. Mm-hmm. Right. And that was – it ended up becoming a proxy. It, yeah. So it was a lot in a different way like Syria and Iraq became for Russia and the – you know, Syria is becoming for the, Russia and the United it, States. It had been Japan-held territory before the war. Imperial Japan. And then, you know, and they hate the Japanese because of it. They still – Oh, and the Japanese hate them. Yeah. So and, they consider them dogs. Right. And so right. you – so how does Kim Il-sung come so, to power? So this is p- post – he discovers Karl Marx in the Communist Manifesto. And this was spreading wildly. Like it's what happened with Che Guevara, Fidel Castro. Right. They had all become radicalized by the manifesto. And this is at the height of even in the United States, the Communist Party. You mm-hmm. know, And so he becomes obsessed with these ideals of like your young Marxist on campus. Mm-hmm. Um, he gets – ends up showing an extreme ability to maintain control so the Soviets back him uniformly. And so since the United States and Russia aren't at war, we're divvying up the spoils of war after World War II, we go ahead and press them to allow a, a democratic South Korea and a North Korea we allow a Soong to start. Soong immediately goes and starts implementing every type of like Marxist radical absolute control. But because he was able to unite the people against Japan and their, you know, them leaving – it was it was welcomed, and actually on the entire Korean Peninsula, it was welcomed. They wanted a united Korea, not a separate you know a separated Korea. Right. We pushed the envelope and created the spark, and then it ends up happening where it turns into constant provocation with Soviet, you know, allowance. They go ahead and allow, and it uh, ends up becoming the proxy and in instigating um, the Korean War from 1950 to 1953, which was caused by what. Um, the Korean War, I forget what that actually it's, sparked it. It's one of it. those. It's one of those wars. You know, we we know a little bit about Vietnam because it's kind of enshrined in our pop culture, but a lot of people don't know about Desert Storm, the first one. They don't know about the Korean when War when Saddam was our ally. <laughs> right. Prior to that, when he was our ally. Exactly right. Like it's 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 amazing how 
our history stopped at World War II when yeah. we were in school, and then it never – most people have no idea what Iran-Contra was, you know, and it wouldn't have been taught to us in the 90s either. No, because you know, it, it was still being discovered. Absolutely. Um, but a lot of the stuff that happened in the, 80, the 80s and the 70s, but yeah, the Korean War is just something that a lot of people don't know much about. Right, and so, so. Um, the, the dis- so the American army was about one-twelfth the size uh, that it was five years earlier during World War II, and mm-hmm. Stalin had recently a World War dispute over a Berlin blockade. And so um, the disagree- that was the initial disagreement. And so during this... Um, Kim's Kim's Il Sung is is growing up and you know becomes radicalized by Marxism, a huge idealist. To turn the Japanese into the scapegoat during occupation, it ended up being a scenario where he was a god with absolute leadership. You know, bringing making them great again. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> and so, um, let's see, read through here because it's. I wish I hadn't made this timeline so long in hindsight. <laughs> Uh, uh, here we go. So they surrender. It's divided up. Um, and what? Oh, what? Decla- what started the invasion by the North and led to the war was the South declaring independence. Mm. So once the South actually declared, so it's no different than the American Revolution. Right. They declared independence. Then the North decides to intervene. Both sides back up, and China was really worried about it. Right. Because China at the time was, you know, a they were under Japan's uh, rule, Imperial Japan's rule as well. Yeah. And they have a, a similar, Mao Zedong, they have a similar leader, charismatic, and they were worried that um, that it was right near their border. You know what I mean? And it would right. fall over to them. That was told to General MacArthur, and he ignored that warning, and they actually ended up falling to communism. And that's what started the whole idea of domino theory, which led to Truman adopting the containment of, of it. Interesting. Through intervention. That's actually – MacArthur ignoring that warning led to the creation of domino theory hmm. leading to Vietnam. Right. Um, and so then – and by 1953, it ends. Um, and really, you have about a 15-year window where it is uh, – there's a non – no no one can put troops in this uh, – the 38th parallel. Right. You know, so – militarized zone. Yeah, militarized zone. And so they – so Soong has about 12 years of only, you know, Soviet influence and funding and backing – to implement basically a social experiment. Right. And he did. And he was charismatic enough to pull it off. And so then not until they captured a U.S. naval intelligence ship in 1968 was there really a conflict conflict again in hostile relations between the United States and North Korea. Right. After the armistice and the ending of the Korean War. But then the lasting effects to this day. I mean, Karl Marx going to Bonn University and being exposed to Hegel – the philosopher led very much to all of the conflict in that entire region, and really most of the nineteenth, you know, twentieth century. Yeah, if in one book, mm. which is fascinating that a book changed the world that much. Ideas and I mean, you still see kids all the day that are Marxist because it's trendy, right? Yeah. You know, bourgeoisie and you know, all the, all the things they right. hate. It's bougie. Yeah, all the sorority girls that you know, hey. all the baristas that hate you. There's a couple sorority girls watching us now, so you better be careful. Are they really? Yeah, they're live tweeting me. Oh, are they on my phone? Are they bougie? Ah, uh, no. Yeah, that was a little uh... rush hail pie. All right, well. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but so, I mean, then uh, Kim Jong-soon dies. His son, mm-hmm. Kim Jong-il, takes over. And they de- end up developing nuclear capabilities um, in the 90s after pledging that they won't by entering into the North or the uh, prolif- no prolifer- non-proliferation treaty. And there's famine. You know, what all- ultimately happens is, as always, communism fails. But because China became communist, and was their access point to the world, they had no incentive to actually allow the adoption, you right. know, or to stop you know, it from being communist. Right. And you end up with a scenario where it's just an incubation of societal experiment to the point there's no real way to bring them back mm-hmm. like from the, from the precipice. And since China can use them as their rabid dog as a proxy, so, that, so they're no longer the Soviets' proxy, mm-hmm. proxy they, they flaunt them from time to time. So anytime... That the North Koreans get out of control, they just all was it? It's Am I being me. tweeted? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yes, you are. You're, the, you're, the chapters you're, after you. I, uh, <laughs> that was quick. You you called them bougie you and they're called pissed. them bougie and they're pissed. <laughs> <laughs> we just got to rebrand. They're so mad. I wish they heard the pre-show. <laughs> oh, I was mean. Yeah. Speaking of that, I'll be right back. Are you leaving? You got a hot uh, poop. 
No, I have to pee so bad. Oh, I wondered. I've drank this whole... I've had to pee for I, I, I yawn when I have to pee. <laughs> She's exposing my spice rack behind the curtain. <laughs> Pay no attention to the spices behind the curtain. That's where Oz is kept. Yeah. I've gotten so many compliments from people that are like, where where is the studio located? I'm like my living room. <laughs> we're on to- we're at the top floor of WIBC. Right, we're on the top. We're at- we're- we have a super secret location. It's called my dining room. <laughs> Behind the curtain is my kitchen. <laughs> on the other side is where I fart and watch television <laughs> and uh, entertain young women. Right, and entertain young women with uh, my documentaries with doc- on propaganda. <laughs> Listen, if you want to date Chris Spangle, I'm single. Uh, I'm available for dates. Date Dear Leader Auction? And by dates, that means you can come over, we'll watch, we'll order pizza, and I will show you documentaries. And then, uh, you know, hump, and then you can go home. Yeah, I'll call you an Uber. Romantic as fuck, isn't it, ladies? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> the Libertarian Casanova. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's much, much more romantic than that. I, I mean, the main thing about what's going on with Korea right now is that it's scary because it's so... They're so aggressive right now, which right. usually is a pretty big sign that you're unstable. Right. And the Chinese, like the president's learning pretty quickly that they're, the world stage is never simple. Ever. So you can take a tough line with somebody, and then you realize, well, that's not entirely true because I might need their help on this. Right. And so you immediately have to compromise on everything because a lot of times you are – you are enlightened to different scenarios, yeah. Like the South China Sea, date, dating back to ancient times and claims by China on this passageway over the, with the Philippines, Japan, and then even some stuff about Taiwan being independent. Like, there's just so many themes involved, right? But North Korea is scary now because now it's not laughing about an, a failed Acme rocket launch that right. barely gets off the beach. Yeah. Now it's, oh, a lot, now they could hit Sarah Palin. He's not Roadrunner anymore. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, now the Palins are at risk, and now we need to be concerned. Yeah. And she can see North Korea from her house. <laughs> it just doesn't seem, though, that a military solution is something that that we can really uh, afford. There's not the appetite for that. Because you're talking about, the, the thing is, though, is you're talking about China probably backing them. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm reviewing the set. Sorry. Yeah, it's right behind you, my Red Hot. My Frank's Red Hot is... Uh, there you go. All right, good. All right. Anyways, live back in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Feel better. Can I just say the amount of pee? <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> High five. <laughs> Ooh, she didn't wash her hands. Gross. I did. <laughs> no, my mom won't... Never mind. No, no, no. No, my it. mom no. accuses me of not washing my hands all the time. She's yeah. she's a she's a Nazi about it because she's like, did you wash your hands? Yeah. So I'm like, is she like, Jewish? I don't. No, <laughs> yeah, I Hannah. don't like drying my hands off though. I don't know. It just takes too much. You're an air dryer I, like Jerry Maguire. Mm-hmm. I come back out and she's like, did you wash your hands? <laughs> like, no. don't speak like Hannah. N- <laughs> no. Like, Do you say that to him or he gross. says it to you? <laughs> I don't. You touch your wiener. Wash <laughs> your hands. I never have said that. You say that to him? No. You yeah, mother he, him? Hannah time. Cook says that. Did you wash your hands? <laughs> Did you shit your pants? Did, Did that you was valid. That was justified. Did you shit your pants? <laughs> <laughs> Did you crack open a bottle of Febreze? <laughs> Why are you recording me? This is my party. <laughs> Why is it smell like shit in here? <laughs> uh, because I poop. Ew, that's disgusting. Uh, Ew, well, boys human, poop? Human beings poop, Hannah. <laughs> Out of your butt. <laughs> 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 they just don't always shower afterwards. Ew. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, that's a, I <laughs> Oh yeah, Miss. I air dry. What? Uh huh. Smell. Oh, it smells uh, like oh soap. God. I want. It smells I, like soap. Salty. She was. She, she was using my computer to edit audio today at work. Eating Lay's potato chips. Always and, classic. Gr- getting my finger so green. My keyboard so greasy. I was using my right hand eating with my left. I'm the opposite of the African so like culture. How, so like how Indians poop? <laughs> the opposite. Oh, okay. Because I, they eat. With, Are you lefty? Yeah, Did you wipe with your hand? <laughs> 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 that was Stop. a ridiculous last episode. Like I could literally, it was like your fingertips were sweating. <laughs> 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 they were so greasy. They it was were not it was greasy. Stu- there was like there was a uh, like a reflection off of them. Oh my gosh. I mean, you could have drawn on people with it. Come on. I'm just kidding. They, that was a delicious bag of chips. I I could tell. Yeah, I devour them. <laughs> I don't usually eat these. Then the truth comes out. But then it, like, it was oh. Lay's classics. She patted me on the back earlier and she goes, <laughs> Why are you sweating? I'm like, 
Get out of my house. I was watching he cops. Was so sweaty. I you. said, have you been watching? So sweaty. I, I, so sweaty. I'm so annoyed by it. And that's what put me in the bad mood, to be honest. Was oh, it? come on. That, well, just the fact that she's like, she called me out on it. That A, that I was sweating. And it's 66 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> and B, that she called me out on it. I was like, it was embarrassing. And I was just like, shut the fuck up, Kat. Oh, it's not that embarrassing. I'm sweaty all the time. Yeah. Okay, this doesn't count because earlier today, I, dry. I was doing this. And he was like looking in my armpit. And I was like, what are you doing? He was like, just checking to see if you shaved recently. I did not say that. <laughs> yeah, you did. I go, would you quit airing out your armpit? And why don't you why don't you? a while and i was like i shaved last night for the record and when i like put my leg up he'll like and take I, a peek I, I, I looked, under my like I cuff at, of my jean to see if i've been shaving my she, leg. she put her leg up and i was like jeez what are you a cat and they were completely you shaving. looked like a, a woolly mammoth no i did not it's, i just shaved last night it, well you might want to get some nair or something <laughs> ever because, heard of five o'clock shadow yeah oh. just not on your ankles it's never like heard of 9 that. a.m <laughs> <laughs> 9 a.m shadow to 9 a.m shadow is real the, to start the grill earlier i just had to rub her legs together <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even grill out we got a pizza so That's true. false <laughs> did you get rosanis uh no papa john's nice sponsor of ball state or the, the yeah, founder this- of the Hey, did he really? Yeah, that's so cool. Every this Ball is, State event, we get free Papa John's. Hell yeah! That's this awesome. is a momentous. Um, this is a momentous moment between Cat and I. Oh, take my hand. This is the first time that we have become shitty with each other in two months. Oh, I thought this was a bit. Oh Were no! You actually, oh no! I'm mad. Was he actually mad? Well, and then his back of his neck was red. So I was like, "Are you sunburnt too? Are you sunburnt?" Did you go outside? I'm like, no, I'm a ginger. That's I'm, where the belt was. I'm ha- <laughs> he interrupted me. <laughs> I'm ham colored. Oh. I was trying to pass. Out <laughs> like, Come, damn it. Oh, hey, I was just, I was just looking out for you. That's fine. I know. You get Genuine to make concern. fun of my shaven leg, so I get to make fun of you for being a little bit sweaty. And it was <laughs> hot in here. It's not 66 degrees. Is it hot in here? It was. Or are you just that woke? I'm just that woke. These Alex Jones conspiracy oh, things. It, they it, got me. Yeah, I've got. It, it is a little stuffy in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had to go in the bathroom and splash water on my face. <laughs> <laughs> She's just like, ah, I just splash it. Yeah, I took a cold shower. You Wish I had without or oh, with aluminum today. <laughs> right, right. Oh yeah, speaking of deodorant, Spangle has to thank. Here we go, Spangle. Oh, what, what do more you have truth to thank telling. Me? Yeah. What do you have to thank me for? What did I bring I, into I, your life? I let her become a. Uh, all of a sudden, she's turned into baby Jeremiah. Over Give here. an inch, take a mile. Yeah. What did uh? Yeah, I I was having some issues with my deodorant. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. As you know, for so long I've been sure to be dry. Thank you. You're uh, I have been, uh, you know, I for, since a teenager, since a, a boy of thirteen, when things started to change for me, gross. I started using <laughs> sure deodorant, and when uh, women were no longer just this annoyance that I tolerated, right? right. Uh, and uh, they had a, a great smelling. It was. It, it was a desert spice. It was a great deodorant. Desert spice. But then I had to go to the unscented when they discontinued it. And uh, <gasps> I was so upset. Travesty. 15 was a rough age because of it. God. And, uh, it's tragic. In hindsight, that's when it all went downhill. So earlier this year, I was like, you know what? I'm going to invest in some nice, nicer T-shirts. You know, I wear a T-shirt every Climate day. Climate fit. I dress, I dress like a fifth grader. Steve so. Jobs. So I decided. No, fifth grader. So, so <laughs> listen to you. <laughs> You're getting... Dear leader is going to have you eaten by a pack of dogs later. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. That's uh, savage. <laughs> even for him. Yeah. So, uh, so I was like, you know what? <clears throat> These new shirts stink. And I'm like, maybe it's just my deodorant. My armpits stink. And so I complained to Kat, and she turned me on to, uh, what is it? Um, the type of deodorant that my dad wears. Yeah. Which is? A uh, degree. Degree, yeah. It's like this it blue is. color. I start wearing it now. I wear men's deodorant because it smells so good, and it does the job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's great. Hey, I'm not a- Here's the thing. Once I turn 20... Don't feel the need to explain. My silence I, is not questioning. Once I, turn I don't know 20, why you're having to rationalize. Hey, once I turn 20, I beat teen pregnancy, and I couldn't use spirit, teen spirit deodorant anymore. Right. Because I'm not a teen. No longer a teen. <laughs> so I you're, you're one year away. Right. That's so, God, that's so disturbing. <laughs> right, We're the three best friends. The three best <laughs> friends. We're the three best <laughs> friends. da 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 you, This touchiness has gotten you in trouble. Uh, oh, my God. Go back to the old deodorant. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, so before our ADD took over, when Cat went to the bathroom, all hell broke loose in here. Uh, the um, the Koreans. So uh, there aren't many. We can't really put too many more economic sanctions on them. 
if we the, want if the we, military action, it doesn't right, seem the, like the military action is too. It's so costly. Like right. you're talking about, and then you're talking about going into a war, and China's going to back them. Mm-hmm. So then it's another Cold War where it's a proxy war, and we have to back the South with um, their, you know, their their decision make allow them to develop nuclear weapons. There's just so many players involved, and there's no real good solution because at the end of the day. China's not going to do that, come through for us and quiet down the discontent on the North Korean Peninsula unless we can we basically stop backing Japan and uh, with a security treaty we're in with them that in the event of a host, you know a, a military skirmish in the South China Sea over who has the claim to these eight islands that the Japan say have, have always been uninhabited and the Chinese say in ancient times were inhabited by Chinese mm-hmm. um, unless we pull out of that treaty with Japan. Then and only then would China then probably get this rabid dog on the you know uh, and calm him down. Right. And so that that's a really tough diplomatic scenario. And then there's the military, which is just not a good one because we couldn't actually do it, or else China and the United States would go into war. And so we'd have to back the South Koreans. And I don't believe they. You know, are we going to back the South Koreans against a nuclear power? Right. And then the United States can't enter into diplomatic relations with the North Koreans. It would mean admitting they're a nuclear power. The United States formal position, State Department's position, is that they are not, since it's a rogue development. Right. And they've been in violation of saying they weren't going to. And so there are just a lot of different layers about it. Yeah. But then at the end of the day, I kind of thought, like, why are we in charge of who gets to have nuclear power? Right. Exactly. But I mean, not that that's a good thing. Because we're the most civilized. That's the thing. Is that's those were kind of the important questions. Where, uh, why is it that we decide state sovereignty? Right. Why is it? You know, then there's the humanitarian grounds. Like, let's say that that we decide we need to liberate the North Koreans. Mm -hmm. We need to let them know what they've been missing out on with McDonald's and you know American style individualism. Where does that moral authority come from? And like I brought up before, it's like. These people, like we said, are so brainwashed. The minute we let them out, what do we expect them to do? Like when we liberated the um, Iraqis, the or when we liberated or liberated for the Holocaust, right? And they were just so thankful to us because they were still like the people in the concentration camps because they were so um, emaciated and like beaten down, right? And they were so like thankful because we were like the Red Cross came in. Was giving oh us yeah, yeah, water. yeah. They welcomed us as liberators exactly. rather than welcoming us as occupiers. Exactly. So my thing is, is that with North Korea, we think we're doing what's morally right, which I mean, I agree with because that's what I agree with morally, for that sense. But however, it's like these people are so brainwashed. The majority of them, when they just turn around and try and kill us, we'd be a foreign occupier. Become terrorists. Absolutely. I mean, because think about it. They have no, they literally have no point of reference for anything else other like than nothing. invasion. Like, they don't care about, for the most part, I'm assuming they, they, it's like the state first, their life second. The state is all, no second. There no is, second. Yeah. There is no life. To so, sacrifice your life for the state is the highest. And there's no concept of the individual. It's only the collective, like, whatever the collective is working toward. And so this is maybe controversial, but it reminds me also of the, uh, like, ISIS. Right? And how so, Exactly. Of putting something first. Oh yeah, the caliphate. What's in the you know what's in the Quran? They are supposed to build God's kingdom on earth. Right. And that if if you're a Muslim, the ISIS interpretation is that if there is a caliphate like the Islamic State, you are to disavow your national allegiance, like mm-hmm. to Saudi Arabia or Morocco, and because you're a Muslim, pledge all of your allegiance to the caliphate. Right. So willing to sacrifice your life, suicide Correct. bombers, whatever. Well, that it's noble. Right. You go to 72 virgins and away we go. Exactly. So is it – would it be similar to – Very much so, yeah. Very much into using – and I mean the thing is so like Marx – I took Marxist uh, theory in college. His favorite class, favorite professor. Did. I did. You know, and then I just went around shit posting. <laughs> right, right. And, and then I and I wrote about how – My professor <laughs> lost his shit and got so mad because I, <laughs> I exposed him and he was a Marxist. Uh, right. But so I would always point out, I would, or I, what I learned is that, so I always couldn't believe Marx never invoked religion. Uh-huh. Marx always advocated, so like in the Soviet Union, they closed all the churches, turned them into museums because they, Marx believed that um, it was a, ma- a delusional belief in a god to keep people poor. Right. You know, because you would be rewarded in the afterlife. And I always thought, man, if Marx really wanted to sell, mm-hmm. sell his theory and get it adopted, he would have promised something in the afterlife and used religion, right. which is why it's so interesting. Exactly. Soon did the same thing. And so it is no different. 
in that there is a like almost a I don't know like this commitment the highest achievement is in the name of the state exactly and it's a religious belief even though it's a godless and atheistic religion or a uh, uh, system right and I think it's interesting that you know growing up especially in the public school system now is that you know, oh, we should feel horrible for the North Koreans. I think a, a viral, one of those viral Facebook videos just went out about uh, a young woman from North Korea crying, talking about how horrible it is. We read these testimonies, etc. But I, it'd be like freeing, liberating an entire country of people who hate us. Right. Of ISIS supporters. Or people just who wonder why you're there. Mm-hmm. And just like Spangle, What are you freeing them from? They're already free. Right. They believe they're free. Right. And like what Spangle said today earlier is... Um, Oh, what did you say? Oh, it's like, think about how much of a hassle and how horrible the Syrian refugee crisis is. And probably, you know, 90-whatever percent of those people are not terrorists. They're no, just... No, 99.99 whatever. Yeah. But it only takes one bad skittle. Exactly, right. <laughs> and so I just think that's so interesting is we have such a problem with that because, oh, whatever. But a lot of, you know, the entire left is so, we should open up our borders, welcome them in open arms. One bad per- seed is... Not, that's not whatever. just... Prove it, you know. But at the same time, they're so, oh, we should liberate North Korea, blah, blah, blah. But On humanitarian like, grounds. Every single person in there definitely hates us because they were maybe 99.99, whatever. They're not aware of us. Exactly. So that's the thing is they exist in a vacuum. They aren't aware of like Western style. Like they, have you ever read, heard of the book Anthem by Ayn Rand? Yeah. So they, there is no I. Mm-hmm. In the in that world in that book, it's only we. So there is literally no word I. That's how the book ends. Mm-hmm. There's no concept of individualism, and that's how most Eastern philo- philosophies are. Mm-hmm. So th- when we talk about the individual and individual rights, that isn't the way they believe. That's not the foundation of everything that their culture is based on. Right. It is the collective. Is the the I is. It's about we. Mm-hmm. It's about the collective, the community. That's the foundation of everything else they believe. So, like, trying to get the... But, like, it's ISIS liberating ISIS sex slaves is a little different because Islam, they're still individuals. Right. With North Koreans, it is like, what do you mean I? It'd be like trying to tell them that they're a person and then ask them to forget about the, the you, great Korea. You don't see... Which is uh, how they were biologically raised. Right? Part of what... <laughs> they were brainwashed. Part of what brought down the uh, Soviet Union was just the fact, that, like, American blue jeans. Like, yeah. when, when Khrushchev went over and started uh, visiting America and uh, Russia <laughs> saw what the Americans had, they went, oh, wow. And so they started investigating it more. This is a much more closed-off society. Mm-hmm. Uh, and but, that's the only way you can man- to maintain order and try these experiments. Yeah, and so I think for a non-interventionist, uh, we're non-interventionists, but you have – when you look at this and you go, okay, we have these long-standing uh, – we're the cause of a lot of misery. You look at Syria. We're, Flawed ideas. Th- just because – that, like Iraq and Afghanistan. I look at it and go, yeah, we broke it. Did we buy it for 15, 20 years? Like we're 15 years later. Do we still have a responsibility to maintain stability in Iraq and Afghanistan? Why – do we have the responsibility to maintain peace in Syria or try and achieve <laughs> peace in Syria? You know, we, on whose behalf? On whose right. behalf? We have we – have, uh, Supported the South Koreans and had a proxy war there, uh, and we are in another situation where it's like, what is our role? I mean, when you look at it, do we have a responsibility to protect uh, the South Koreans? And How- is that responsibility based on our own prejudice toward the individual? Right. Sure. Is it that better? Mm-hmm. Is it better Ex- to be an, expl- so? Is it is it morally right to spread individualism and liberal style democracy and all the freedoms to you know have no restrictions and face the threat of death? Uh, you know, because you believe is that more a better moral position or a more philosophically correct position than the collective outweighing mm-hmm. the individual? Well, again, it's the hubris that we talked about during the Iraq War. It's like you go over and you. You start a war in Iraq. We're going to free them. We're going to be liberators. Listen, here's here's the American Constitution. Now, we know y'all look different, but (laughs) once you just get a taste of American Constitution, you're going to love it. Sunni, she, he, he, he. Right. It's it's an arrogance that we think that once you build the type of – once you introduce them to democracy in the way that Americans 
practice democracy, they will be like Westerners. And people in the Middle East and in the Far East are not Westerners. And that individualism spreads because you're assuming they're self-interested. You take people who that's been brainwashed out of, it doesn't it can't grow because there's nothing to grow on. And I think this kind of ties back to the original question, question we had, which at, maybe at the beginning of the episode, which was, is there such a thing as unbiased news? And I said, there's not. And so exactly every, it ties directly back to that ties directly. I think everybody is extremely biased about what their culture and lifestyle is. We are a product of how we were raised, born, influenced. We just adopt these things and program them onto us. Right. And yet, there is no fundamental truth that we can prove. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, there's no way to point to it and say, because McDonald's and you know women being able to drive and vote and yada, 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 and all these individual freedoms are what we believe are right, we can't go to some court and prove it in, that this is more correct than the collective view. Exactly. That's the damning part. Right. Yeah. It's very interesting. And I think you know we talk about the horrible propaganda, like we said, that auto guy, right? Was the one you read all about and can't pronounce his last name? I don't even know. Basically, something. <laughs> basically, was killed because he stole a piece of North propaganda. Korean propaganda. But yet, everything we learn in history class could be considered propaganda. It, because the movie we just watched, um, what was it called? The Free State of Jones. Free State of Jones. Yeah, a lot of that was, you know, watching that, I was like, wow, you know, of course, morally, we don't agree with the slavery. Confederates, with slavery. However, it's weird seeing them as humans. It's definitely weird because they're painted as the bad guys. Absolutely. Just yeah. like North Korea is painted as the bad guys and Islam is painted as the bad because guys. Because they have a different – What's the thing is we villainize what we disagree with. Exactly. And that's what ends up framing it. Like, you know, um, you're t I, even I – this is before I was born. Like the Ayatollah was like seeing uh, Michael Myers' mask in mm -hmm. society. Like they painted the Ayatollah Khomeini, the revolutionary leader of Iran after uh, the Iran hostage crisis. Mm -hmm. He was in the United States – um, positioned as the seeing Freddy Krueger, like it was a right. nightmarish, like evil, evil person. Same with Osama bin Laden. Exactly. Right. Osama bin Laden would be the perfect comparison. Is that there's Osama bin Laden, and there's no moral difference the way they're sold and positioned in American society from Freddy Krueger. Just like and, with, go ahead. And if you and if you try to say, you know what, Osama bin Laden in, in the in the Gulf War said, I know how these people operate. They are the ones that funded me in Afghanistan against the Soviet they Union. They built the Mujahideen in it, Afghanistan. If you if you prince of Saudi Arabia come in and you allow them to build air bases to fight Saddam Hussein, they will never leave the Holy Land. And so let the Mujahideen take care of this. And th th he didn't. He let uh, the Americans build three bases in Saudi Arabia. And then that are still operational that are, today. They're still there. That were built for the first Gulf War, and, uh, and and that was part of his motivation. Is is our expansionism around the the world? It's our intervention in other the foreign affairs of other cultures, other places. And if you say that, the the conservative news magazine called me ISIS one day. Two the the years American ago. conservative magazine. It, no, it was it was Human Events. Or Human Events. It is an American conservative magazine, not the American conservative magazine. Uh, but Human Events called me ISIS for just pointing that out and saying what is – like I don't feel that Osama bin Laden was a liar. I think he explained exactly what his motivations were. And so I want to understand why – it's like why the people who don't want Alex Jones to be interviewed by Megyn Kelly. Well, here's a person who has a large voice. Why wouldn't you want to understand what they're talking about? Mm -hmm. you know? And Kat, I don't think y you had – you were surprised by the humanization of somebody on the Confederate because right. you spent at, at 20 years old, you spent your K through 12 and now two years of college, your education being essentially indoctrinated about the evils of other uh, the people right. we fought wars against. You know, you right. talk like we talked about German soldiers. Obviously, they were fighting for the wrong cause. They were fighting for something that wasn't noble, but they were still people. Right. And, and it, a lot it, of it wasn't noble agree. in our opinion. Right. And it, it kind of reminds me of the, uh, you know, what I guess westernizing uh, uh, colonization of uh, Native Americans, right? Absolutely. Because they saw them as savages, whereas, you know, my sociology class, we learn, okay, in order to be considered a successful group of people, you know, like I, I think we talked about this, you have to have a sense of religion, uh, you know, education, a culture, entertainment, traditions, customs, traditions, customs language. language, everything like that. And Native Americans all had that. Absolutely. It different was just than different. ours. But 
look where that got us, you know, trying to colonize and westernize a group of people. We've lost culture. We've created so many issues from that. So my thing is, is that morally agree, and I don't think any sane person would morally agree with the condition. Yeah. How far will it be the exact same thing? We try and westernize something. Well, it's our morality. And it back blows up in our face. That's the thing. It's, it's our morality that you're from. And that is how I view it, too, because ultimately I view it as, is that person more likely to die, I guess? Mm -hmm. Life versus death is like the fundamental issue. And it, when any type of behavior is more likely to result in death, mm -hmm. where the cultural ideals are and the system is, that in itself, since in my opinion, life is preferable to death, is the foundation of uh, a more moral society. Right. And so that's why Western individualism, I believe, is more morally superior pract from a, almost a pract practical perspective mm -hmm. in that you're less likely to die yeah. right? For, for what you believe and for um, having a difference of opinion or wanting to, you know, but that is still framed within the context of my individualism, mm -hmm. how I view the world. If I viewed the world as there's the great Korea that's – I'm a part of the larger whole that can achieve something historic, sort of like what Nietzsche talked about, in that the ubermensch that Adolf Hitler became you know, very uh, interested in becoming was that there is no right or wrong. God is dead and there is no mm -hmm. truth. It's just will you be remembered? How great of a thing can you accomplish? Mm -hmm. Right. And I don't choose to believe that because I still think that life is preferable to death. And so that from there – I look at everything through the perspective of what is morality based on our, you know, will doing this result in you dying? Right. So, let's the question of what is our responsibility in this situation? Do you feel any as a libertarian, a humanitarian allure or pull? Absolutely. I, I mean, absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, to be, I mean, and I'm I'm more empathetic than most libertarians as an ENFJ. Way more. As an ENFJ and as two ENFPs sitting next to me more connected to uh, other people and emotions than most libertarians who are the dreaded INTJs. Ugh. You know, my mortal enemy, the <laughs> INTJ. It seems to be that you're only attracted to those women. Chloe. Chloe's an INTJ. I don't believe that she is. I know. She can't be. There's can't no be way. true. Can't be true. I, I like, like Chloe. Too much. like Chloe way too much for her to be an INTJ. Uh, we tease because we know most of you listening are INTJs. Um, but, uh, you know, we... I'm much more empathetic when I when I think about the life of a North Korean. It, it causes me grief because it is such a terrible existence from my point of view. And by comparison. And by mm -hmm. comparison, uh, and and I would think that just from the human condition, uh, it is it, 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 living in a stifled 1984 type society is is just it's bleak. It's you know, in a world of technicolor, they're living in gray. But I can't be codependent about it. You know, as a, as a recovering codependent, uh, I, from Jacob Sesternino says, did you just assume my personality? <laughs> Very funny, Jacob. Very good. Very funny. Uh, as Don't Myers-Briggs me, bro. <laughs> yeah, this isn't 16 personalities. Jacob has a fluid personality, <laughs> and uh, we appreciate that. Oh, God, I'm Myers-Briggs non-binary. Trust right. me. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm inter an introverted extrovert. Um, <laughs> How gross. original millennial. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, I will tell you, I, you know, it is... Uh, I I uh, what was I about to say? How your empathy makes you feel so you feel so bad, and you empathize with the, their situation, how bleak it is. Uh, I'm a recovering codependent. If, yeah, you yeah. if you don't know what that is, I cannot recommend the book Scary Close by Donald Miller enough. Uh, Ninety-eight percent of the population struggles with you know codependency on some level, uh, you know, and and I've talked about it in the past, and. You know, part of my codependency is just that I want to help people and I want to uh, do things for them. And instead of letting other people learn, I try to just teach them, you know, this is the right way. Here's what I've learned. Here's how you need to do it. Mm -hmm. Here's how I want you to do it. This is the right way. Let me fix it for you. No, no, no. You're too stupid to do it yourself. Let me do it for you. You know, like, does this sound familiar being uh, my intern at work, Cat? Who, me? Yeah. <laughs> so... I uh, I just you know I I don't want America to fall into that trap as we continually fall into this trap where right. we ne we need to do it for them. Those little brown people over there just can't figure it out. Let, let me free you. <laughs> let the superior Americans teach you how to live instead of realizing that if the North Koreans want to create a different world, then they need to do it themselves. 
and uh, and they largely have. and they largely have. And so you know, nuking America, we certainly need to exhaust all means. That does not happen. But we also have to recognize that part of Kim Jong Un's game is not destruction, and I no. I think that I I would hope that there is a part of him that realizes the consequences uh, of doing that would be absolutely catastrophic for him and everyone else. And, and maybe, the Chinese don't want a war either. A, a, right. a, nobody does, mm-hmm. and so part of his escalation is that he he needs to, in the way that soon united the Koreans against the Japanese. He is using escalation to unite the North Koreans against the United States and the Consolidate South Consolidate his control. And mm-hmm. so his escalation is not necessarily aggression. Uh, it is it, – it, it It's is, desperation. It, it is aggression, but it is not necessarily intent. Exactly. You know, and so mm-hmm. – The need, problem is, though, it is, when someone like that, you're, you become the boy who cried wolf. What, what, what do you what, – crazy notions of God Emperor does he think about himself. But you get yourself backed into a corner where someone calls your bluff. Mm-hmm. So you've spent all this time spouting off about how you're going to do this or how you're going to threaten them or how you're going to unleash nukes. Right. And then someone says, all right, bring it. Right. And then you're committed. Yeah. And that's when it turns into World War III. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I don't know. That's the danger of, of such a, ra- you know, such a tough, taking such a bravado and, you know, over, rather than just saying, listen, we are really struggling internally the world becoming a digital world where we're all connected through the internet with information and the free flow of it, that is threatening our very foundation of our society. Yeah. Right. I don't know. Personally, I view it as, you know, were we right to, it, just for me, it, it reminds me of the colonization of Native Americans because, yes, they had. My people. What? My people. Your people. Right. Because, you know, they had, like we said, the education, re- a type of religion, all these things. They had all the, the key factors that sociologists um, consider to make a society Yeah, to categorize successful. them as, yeah. Right. Um, now they were doing, you know, human, some tribes were doing human sacrifices and didn't necessarily dress in the way that I would want to. However... <sighs> You know, right? I'm there, there, sorry, there, but I don't like that aqua color. Their right. aesthetic was <laughs> yeah. So their aesthetic awesome. is just not pleasing. Um, I hate the feathers. Barbarians. And, ugh. But at the same time, like, yes, I am a religious, you know, person. But were we right to do that? That's the ultimate question. That is the ultimate. There's no question. way to answer that. And yes, North Korea, I do not agree with at all. You know, the um, torturing and the killing it's and not the, what she told me earlier. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> you're I, on your I, own, Otto. Like Go tear does. down a banner, why don't you? Right. <laughs> But, you know, I don't agree with stuff. However, look where the his, look where the history of America and the Native Americans took us. Where does it lead you to? Where, do, well, where will it lead us? Because here's the thing. The, you know, back when this happened, the white people had guns, Native Americans didn't. Look what happened. Now, it's, it's the 21st century. We both have nukes. We both have a platform online. Now the game's different. Now the game is extremely different this is extermination of all of us and it's not where you can you know hide hide down in the riverbed or wherever from from you know a hydrogen bomb yeah it's it's a literal bomb absolutely so. and like now the technology is so good with a hydrogen bomb there's very little physical destruction it just wipes out all life exactly so it's just devastating and but at the end of the at the same time having a nuke's a bit like it's a mexican standoff to an extent mm-hmm. because if you use it you're going to suffer the same fate Exactly. And, and there is no good answer on this, and, but it's, it's so important. It's like you were saying, like the, the tie back to the, the origins of it are – it is so hard to break through to most people that their worldview and how they've been raised, it's that there right. isn't some supreme council that rules whether it's right or wrong. Mm-hmm. We're all guessing, and it's your best bet. And then you sort of have to each adopt your own you – know, what you based on the fact – most people never go down that discovery process, but you know, based on this – do I have does such a right exist on humanitarian grounds? Right. We all like because of I mean just being an empathetic or sympathetic person. The, when you actually personalize the suffering in North Korea, it makes you want to go and just invade and right. do whatever you know. The ends justify the means. History teaches you though that instinct leads to an ongoing commitment that actually brings you down. Right. You know your idealism ends up being also your. What brings you? Well, what what made you popular and made you grow ends up being the same thing that causes everything you've built to fall apart and crumble. Exactly. And so that's the, that's I feel that same thing, but it's me projecting on what the right way for them to live is. Mm-hmm. And 
it isn't feasible. Like the military options aren't real. Mm-hmm. We're not going to give a nuke to South Korea because then they'd nuke each other. Right. Um, at the end of the day, it's a, it's, it's a, I don't know what ends up happening though, because he's trying to maintain ironclad control and has to for it to continue to exist. Mm-hmm. Because the one thing about Western style consumerism and individualism is that it does tend to be adopted rather rapidly mm-hmm. because I think humans are, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be self-interested because it's a survival thing. Mm-hmm. And so that just sort of develops and, and grows into a very, you know, Western consumerist ideal and like what we like and having diversity of choice and having, you know, all the different options, even though we may not use them. The cultural invasion of these things like happened in the Soviet Union are sort of inevitable. And so since the Internet is as prevalent as it is and there's just no long term way to prevent any type of, of that seeping into their culture, it's probably inevitable a, a military conflict results. Mm hmm. Because that threatens the very their very existence. Right. Right. So, I wish I could sanctions. Is, ultimate, is there, ultimate, I mean, ultimately, 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 we'll probably just, cave on Taiwan with China, and then they'll get that'll buy us ten, fifteen years. Sure. I, I mean, then to, it'll happen again. Uh, to, I don't know if you want to start wrapping up on this. Uh, yeah. Ultimately, we need a another natural land like crisis, like it happened in two thousand six, the mass flooding and famine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then aid being the way in to establish relations and exposure to their people. In, in, in my way of I hate to say that, but... Go ahead. I was going to say, do you think it's similar to... Okay, um, very interesting. When we were learning about... When we were watching the shows about it, you know, the 40s and 50s probably, J- Japanese people were considered evil. They were mm-hmm. considered Nazis. And now it's like a second home. Absolutely. So my Toyota car- and Honda, the two top sell- or no, Toyota's exactly. number one selling car in America. Exactly. And like only took like thirty years. We dropped the nuke on them and you know, they came out with the what is it, the Museum of Peace and mm-hmm. they all their stuff. So I feel like because Japan is a small island, right? North Korea is a small country. So part of me is like, Okay, if we drop the nuke on them, is it will that just fix it just like it did with Japan? Unfortunately our ally, the South Koreans who we demanded be <laughs> created it would affect them exactly <laughs> so, you know it'd be like hitting um hitting savannah georgia with a nuke and then hoping jacksonville didn't suffer any fallout right so i guess my kind of thought is this isn't a simple problem like it was in the 40s where we just ended you know we got back from pearl harbor and we just kind of ended the japanese because we broke only- their back because they're all of their allies were gone, right? Well, I mean, they, everyone was Nazi Germany was trying to fight too many fronts, and mm-hmm. so that was their main ally, obviously. And Japan grew too big too quick, and mm-hmm. they attacked us, drew us into the war, and they weren't remotely prepared for it. But that was, you know, that was a, an ideological war, yeah. and like to win an ideological war, to win a religious war, or to win any type of philosophical or like ideological war, like a you know the spread or adoption of communism. You have to break the back of their opponent, and mm-hmm. it's total war. Mm-hmm. There is right. no – to kill off an idea is – the consequences have to be so extreme right. that the very thought of continuing on that idea threatens your life. Right. And most – like most leaders, mo- almost any person wouldn't want that type of decision. Right. Because I'm sure Harry Truman stayed up the rest of his life thinking that he cooked that many Japanese. Absolutely. Right. And it was to save American lives because more and more American soldiers just would have kept dying. Right. But at the end of the day, someone has to make that call. Mm-hmm. And so to, to win an ideological – like the, the communism in North Korea, is, it's inevitable. Information spreads and it will get there. Yeah. Right. It's just a matter of time. But for other things like religion, like ISIS, that isn't something you can beat with drone strikes. Mm-hmm. Right. It just further inflames it and then prevents, you know, you might buy yourself a little bit of a, rep- a reprieve from the constant warfare, but it is an end destination that one side will win and impose control absolutely. So are out for the issues with North Korea and ISIS, these extremist um, ideas, ideologies, are out would be either some huge catastrophic natural disaster where you can open up ties since there's no existing dialogue to where we had to see. And, and here's another, interesting... we need aliens. You ever seen independence day? <laughs> That's how we, we fix it. Aliens. Bill Pullman speech, ISIS, it all goes away. Well, Mankind. And I think it's interesting because 
for and I think it's because of the way um, that just our society is is never hearing the libertarian viewpoint on this is that for some reason I'm 20 years old and the idea and I'm consider myself fairly up to date with politics the idea of putting aside the differences and working together with these strong um, people like North Korea and ISIS never has entered my brain. It's always been, we have to destroy them. Yeah, we win. We have to beat them because that's how the mainstream media is going back to that. So I think it's interesting to just hear that point is what if something that both of us couldn't control happened to where we were forced to open the gate and work together. And that would be an existential threat to humanity would Mm -hmm. be, you know, eventually any ideology wipes away once it's life and death, you know, that sort of reframes everything in the terms of, Maybe I shouldn't go shoot this guy. I might need help in beating whatever threat threatens all of us. Right. You know, it's that the gravity of such situation, or like how grave of a situation that is, clearly defines everything one, for once and for all. Right. Yeah, and, and for me, it goes back to the American Revolution. I, I think if you look at information in that time period, you mm-hmm. had enlightened men who were part of a colony who had access to John Locke, who had access Thomas to... Thomas Paine. Tom, mm-hmm. You know, Thomas Paine was able to spread information. Uh, ben Franklin was able to, to write. You had, you had people reading Cicero. You had all that freedom of information. And information is what sparked the American Revolution. Economics sparked the American Revolution. And the... the, the, the use of force and violence and war were the, the absolute last resort and only when they felt that they were pushed to the very end and they had to defend their right to be a free and independent people Mm -hmm. and i think that it is in in a situation like north korea it is uh the the question i think that i don't know that we did a great job answering is is this for the north korean people we owe them nothing we we can set up Voice of America Towers, we can feed them information, but the choice for them to live with the Kim Jong-uns of the world is their choice to make. Mm-hmm. It is... Uh, it, it the is, question becomes then, do they have such a choice the way they've been brainwashed? It, it is up to them. Are they, is, but I mean, are they is, aware of it? It is not up to me, Chris Spangle, sitting in Indiana, to to fix that problem. It is not up to anyone in our audience listening. To, if, if people do feel passionate about that and they want to go to North Korea and try and solve that problem, go for it. Don't stay up till 3 and drink in the lobby. And right. don't steal a flag. Um, yeah. But freedom in North Korea is, is just not the job of the American government and the American taxpayer. Now, what do we owe the South Koreans in, in that we have been <laughs> involved in a fear escalation and have – in, in in creating a military competition, we have forced both South Korea and North Korea and the Chinese and the Japanese into a situation where everybody felt that they had to be armed and armed at a greater level. and An arms race. An, an arms race, essentially, in this region. So what do we owe the people of South Korea? And I think that and that— And for how long? And for how long? Mm-hmm. And that is always the—that is the tough question for non-interventionists and libertarians— mm-hmm. In the modern age, after 100 years of neoconservatism and globalism through through liberalism, uh, where you've had and, – and, and listen, if you go back and you watch these Civil War movies or you watch World War II documentaries and you see the carnage of World War II, for instance, mm. uh, we don't have that kind of carnage in a mass scale. We don't have – ten percent of the population, two percent of the population dying in, in all of these – massive, uh, large-scale Escalation. de- escalations. So in, in some ways you do see globalism working, but I would argue that it's not because of the UN and global governance. It's because we, as Americans, have opened up markets and the economy has and, – and our leaders have done things to enrich the third world um, that have made people more peaceful. When – People are are working towards their own personal desires, their own personal goals. They're they're uh, they're allowed allowed right. to prosper economically in a way that they see fit. People become more peaceful. Absolutely. And so, military intervention only does uh, it only creates more military arms races. It, every time you intervene. We intervened and defeated Nazism in Imperial Japan. All right. We created the exact same situation in Israel that we created in South Korea. Mm-hmm. 
a Asian Israel there, right? And now right. we own it, and right. and then we signed a protection treaty in order for Japan to demilitarize. Don't worry, we'll sign a treaty with you, and we will forever protect you should you be drawn into conflict. Right. Mm-hmm. Never thinking that China and become the rival to our world power. Right. And that, you know, China backs North Korea. We, they didn't think and anticipate such a scenario arriving where the South China T- Sea will be contested. So now China, who we usually rely on to quiet the North Koreans and, you know, keep their madman from threatening to nuke us, well, we can't give back Japan in an escalated military conflict because then all of a sudden we're at war with the people we need to shut off the rabid dog. Yeah. And so intervention, even... The, it's it's antithetical to humans to see su- no sufferings going on, or I guess Americans maybe more so than humans, and to not have the wisdom to know that doing it'll be, the more good we want to do, the more harm will cause. Right, mm-hmm. and the constant we will own it from there on in, because it is so tough to just say you know what I'm going to let it go, and North Koreans be North Koreans. Yeah. There's this like an American action bias. You know, we act first, ask questions later, we're because we're sure we're, John Wayne, we're yeah. the liberators of the world. Right. right. Mm. Not knowing all the problems, but in hindsight, knowing all the problems we're going to create. And, and secondly, the, 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 the codependent notion that we need to fix everybody's problems just creates more and more problems. And, right. and I would argue that it, it is America withdrawing from the world stage over the Obama and the Trump administrations, that has not caused instability. What has caused instability is the CIA interjecting itself into these situations. You look at the great playing st- organic uprising exactly in, in right. rival, you know in countries they don't belong and again that's more intervention. It has nothing to do with non intervention let's let's use the power of our free market to culturally to, invade to, to Culture and economics do far more damage to despotic regimes than our bombs do. What what happened in Japan with the nuclear weapon was was devastating, but to women and children and and to it, it just it's you know it, it's uh, it, we're, we're, the reason that we're friends with Japan is not because we f- scared them into submission. It's because we started buying shit from them. Absolutely. And, you know, economics, like we always talk, is the foundation of all things. And the very actions being driven by this dictator, by Kim Jong-un, are completely driven by not an economic depression because that's their constant state. It is, is, you know, knowing that it is unlikely he will be able to maintain control um, and feed his population and avoid starvation uprisings. And, you know, it's it's, once people start starving, there's going to be societal discontent right. no matter how much you've been brainwashed because then it's i can't eat and i'm not going to starve in the name of the state people get desperate and no, so the hunger games right exactly precisely and so ultimately there's there are these rebellions and because of the economics of them not being able to subsist entirely on aid from china and internally mm-hmm. by not trading with anyone they are desperate and he will continue to get more and more rabid and radical in his acts because he has no other option Right. It's either open up to markets, concede, and begin the descent to less control, which ultimately ends in the you know the um, opening up to the world, the world order, or it means almost like a martyrdom where I don't care, I refuse to let what my grandfather built end, and I'm just going to if I have to die, and we're going to burn the whole damn thing down. Right. So uh, Kyle wants to know, what are you going to do? Just wait around for the West Coast, Greg? What am I going to do? Yeah, absolutely not. Well, how do you keep them from? How do you keep him from nuking us? It, it, because basically, I would tell Japan to pipe down about the South China Sea conflict. It's inevitable. China is the rising power. Japan is the declining power. Mm-hmm. China is going to control the South China Sea. Period. Therefore, we will either give them a concession on Taiwan or give them a concession on the Japanese backing of military conflict and then have um, Z quiet the rabid dog for 15 years. Did you just assume my gender? Yes, he, yeah. Z Spangle. Uh, he checked, Spangle is masculine. He wants, he wants an ungendered checkmark box. Oh, right, right. Um, I don't know. What was that story about Don't Identify that was in the news this week? They had the first genderless baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The parents he had decided not to. It's a gender unknown. Of course you read that. I read the headline. Snowflake. Did you write it? <laughs> no, but that's what I would do. Is At the end of the day, we know how this ends. Yeah. We don't want war. China doesn't want war. At the end of the day, we both have to save face. 
Japan needs to, it's China's going to rebuild the Silk Road. That's their goal. So they're going to control sea trade there. So we're either going to cave on Taiwan and not sell them more military, uh, you know, sell them more military weapons, or we'll tell the Japanese to amend the treaty and condition it upon certain conflicts or conditions being met, and then Kim Jong-un shuts up for 15, 20 years. You see the rebuilding that's gone on in China? It's because China isn't trying to play the world's policeman. They're more capital than us. Capitalist than us. And so they are able to focus more on rebuilding their economy and building an economy out of a communistic state at a rapid rate. And it's because they're not spending so much money on weapons and arming the rest of the world and going over and try. And so it's not a question of war or no war. It is a much more complex situation. And so you can have a diplomatic solution. Mm-hmm. You know, it, let's not ever fall back into the trap of the the Iraq War and look at where that got us. Our last century, and and, and you go uh, the entire last century, the entire history of humanity is war or no war. Listen, diplomatic solutions have been exhausted. There's no more diplomatic solutions that could be had here. No, George Bush wanted to start a war, it's, and so that was a great propagandist point. But that was not the truth. Never mm-hmm. is. Never is. At the end of the day, you know, it's about everything stems from resource control. Mm-hmm. The next thing are going to be navigational ways like, like the South China Sea. And so the the bit players, people like North Korea and people like the Philippines and, you know, their leader, uh, Scarface, yeah. <laughs> um, the, they, they know they're not as relevant. They know they're not the major player. And so because of that, they are – Backed by people that who know they can control and get them to act out when they need mm-hmm. a threat. Yeah. It's no different than the civil rights. Um, you know, the rabid dogs that, that Martin Luther King was protecting regular mainstream society from or communities from. I got to tell you, I, I loved the movie – a free state, uh, the free state of Jones. Every libertarian should watch that movie. Every libertarian, every person should watch that movie. I found it to be such. It was such a great libertarian movie because they have taxation in it, where they go in and the soldiers steal ten percent of the woman's goods, and she as gets the Bible mad, allows, and, right, and takes ten percent of her goods. You have, you have the the use of the Second Amendment with the the little girls holding rifles right. and, and protecting their homestead. You have also just the notion of what we've talked a lot about here, which is just stand up and say you don't control me and uh, we're taking back our – and so the Free State of Jones is about this guy, Newton. What was uh, what was his first name? I don't know his first name because uh, I, w- I had it on while I was working on uh, the show notes too. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, it was it, uh, this, this – uh, I wish – can you look it Matthew up? McCona- yeah, Matthew, Matthew McConaughey, McConaughey is the star. Matthew stars in this movie and it's a two-story base where you have a southern – uh, nurse, because he's a conscientious objector uh, and uh, was conscripted, and so he went to fight in the Civil War, and he was a nurse and he, because he refused to fight because he was anti-slavery, and he's from Mississippi. He was from southeast Mississippi, mm-hmm. and uh, he was – in the movie – I don't know how historically accurate the movie is. I'm just starting Newt to – Newt Knight. Yeah, Newt Knight. Newt Knight. And uh, I'm just about to start reading a book called The State of Jones. Uh, uh, I, got it, I got it from the library, uh, so I pay for it. I, I was reason. completely unaware of this story. Me too. And which is shocking because this is a great thing to point out for libertarians. Absolutely. And so this guy, uh, his, his nephew, something happens with his nephew, and he defects. And I'm going to try and not spoil everything. But something happens with the nephew. He defects and goes back to Mississippi and he ends up in the swamps hiding out with runaway slaves. And he uh, eventually gets more defectors, more runaway slaves all gather in the swamp, and then they have enough numbers. He lures uh, Confederate soldiers who are hunting these people and also uh, people who are hunting runaway slaves into the woods and gets their guns. They eventually get armed. And they are able to... Uh, they're a ragtag militia of sorts. They're a ragtag militia that eventually takes over a quarter of the state of Mississippi during the Civil War. And uh, a significant portion, almost a fourth of it. And basically takes over all of these towns through... through it is the perfect example of why the Second Amendment is necessary. You, it goes back to the story that I've told a, a lot of times about my uh, my origin story of libertarianism. Essentially, the first notion of being a libertarian came in my eleventh grade uh, history class, and Mr. Binge was standing up at the front of the world history class saying, "You realize that power is a is an illusion, right? 
because there are 20 of you and there's one of me and I'm standing up here and you have the illusion that I have power over you. But if all 20 of you stood up and decided to walk out of the room or to murder me, <laughs> there's nothing I can do about it because you you outpower me. There's more of you. And you don't have to come to school. You just choose to come to school because you choose to believe in the illusion of power. And that is how government operates. It, and, and it goes back to this Declaration of Independence. And I, and I hope that over this July 4th and every July 4th, you read the Declaration of Independence, mm -hmm. not as like a hokey, jingoistic thing, but in... <laughs> In that Not in pledging allegiance to right, it. Like just, just got done reading no, what's in it. the Constitution or Did I don't you? know. No. Oh. I tried to make a joke. Didn't uh, land. Continue. So like the, the Declaration of Independence is one of the greatest declarations of human rights, of natural rights in human history. And it is you, – you don't – like if you watch John Adams – and you you realize how uh, the series on HBO, which is Paul Giamatti, it's so great. Stunning. Any, any one of our listeners will absolutely love this. I watched that, and then I watched Lincoln. Which I can't even. I love. literally can't. Oh, it's my, I, I can't even. Right. Can't even. I can't literally even. am shaking yeah. when I'm just talking about Daniel Day-Lewis' decision he, to quit acting. He loves that movie But so he'll much. never beat that role. Uh, and then I watched uh, and The Free State of Jones, and I was just so fully woke after this, this weekend. <laughs> he, had his, he didn't leave his Gadsden flag shirt oh my God. marching around, beating on the doors of neighbors. Monday Monday into Tuesday, just I was so fucking – I rode a bald eagle to work. <laughs> he was, was walking just, around his apartment's parking lot with a drum yeah. trying to stir up. <laughs> foment discontent for a revolution. You don't realize how incredibly radical the founders were Ooh. and how, how absolutely mad they were and how they were uh, like mad as, as in crazy. It's like these, the equivalent of Puerto Rico saying, no, we're going to be independent. And guess what? We're not paying these taxes. Keep we're not, your bill. We're taking, yeah, we're not paying back that debt. We're out of here. And uh, America invading and then winning their independence by fighting the U.S. military. I mean, that's how huge the American independence was. And you, you, I, went, I spent a lot of time this weekend going back and reading a lot of revolutionary writing. And just – God, you forget how libertarian the founding of this country was. Oh, my was. God. And when you go back and read the Declaration of Independence, it is such a libertarian document – it, it espouses the true foundation of what libertarians believe in that we have a right to stand up and walk away from the powers that we perceive to be over us. Mm -hmm. When they and, stop providing for your security and, and start messages. infringing on our, our, our liberties, which are given to us by nature or to by a God. And you, you have the right to these certain things that are all outlined in the in the Declaration of Independence. And you realize how far – We've like come from the founding, and how absolutely radical uh, this government is compared to the the Constitution. And it the would way make King written. George blush. Absolutely, and so you he, he, these guys got mad at the idea that they had. I, I wonder what the actual tax. Rate oh, that's the thing is, if we had taken the deal on the table from the British, we'd have been right. financially better off than if we'd declared independence. Absolutely. Right. I mean, it, it's just – it's stunning how – like the tax rate probably was like 5%. It was less than 10%, I would imagine. And they were like, nope, fuck you guys. We're out of here. You know? I mean, it's just insane. So, were those like stubborn, rebellious, independent libertarians? Yeah, you know, right. We really were. And so the, the free state of Jones, going right into that, you see it. And these guys, they band together and use their Second Amendment, uh, you know, from martinarmory.com. Uh, <laughs> they actually the sponsor the entire Second Amendment. <laughs> right. Smithsonian, it says martinarmory.com. It's a free ad. Brought to they, you by uh, martinarmory.com. <laughs> they supplied for the, uh, yeah. not the American movie we just revolution. watched. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, the first, that revolution. But yeah, right. People go, you know what? You're, you, it, like we've talked about with, um, you know, who, who was the guy in New York City that basically said, I can't breathe? And Eric. Uh, Eric Garner. Uh, Garner. I, I can't breathe, and, and that was a man who was had, had his rights snuffed out. Trying by, to sell a homemade cigarette, basically a farmer's market for tobacco. Exactly, and he had his life snuffed out by an oppressive government over nothing. He was killed over nothing, and that, that was a revolutionary cry. And I think that that is why so many, so many people see the things like Philando Castile and Eric Garner, and they, they get up in arms and they form Black Lives Matter. Uh, and, and you watch this movie and you see how bad it was for black Americans after 
After, they were literally property. They were literally property. Even, Go to the store and buy. Even after the Civil War had ended. Right. Absolutely. I mean, were you the apprenticeship. Were you surprised by that? Yeah. Because like Explain I said, in, in I mean, in school you just learned that, oh, yep, Abraham Lincoln was great. and uh, Freed the slaves. Freed the slaves. Was that happy. was all the Civil War was about, not preserving the Union. And then once the slaves were freed, they just were great, productive members of society. Full well, integration right off the bat. Exactly. They just... We're great people. Well, I just think it's interesting, one, about how um, not – how kind of in- interesting Abraham Lincoln was to invade first. You know what I mean? It was not a war of northern aggression. I joke about that all the time and so do you. Yeah, I absolutely. Mean, it was a war of northern aggression. But going back to the whole morally, of course, you know, if this were talked about on a bigger platform, people would be like, you guys are so racist, you know, believing the conf- – no, obviously, t- moral out of it. But, yeah, they, they – did it first. Also, I think it was interesting how they uh, the South created all of these. Oh, apprenticeship seven years. You're still kind of like a transition. Slave. It's a probationary in, period to in get the right. Yeah, indentured servitude, and how pay, pay off your debt. I bought you. You know, exactly. I, I was explaining to her that if you really study the civil rights, you didn't have any black people registered in these southern states in the 50s and 60s. I mean, if you really go back and study the the uh, civil rights era, you realize that in 1950 and 1960s, the black people in this country didn't have any rights, and they right. were treated as poorly as they were when they were as uh, during Reconstruction. Mm-hmm. I mean, and so the absolute injustice. That's why I look at things like the Civil Rights Act, and I go. Okay, well, people aren't allowed. What is it? The Thirteenth Amendment that is the mm-hmm. the right to vote for no, the Thirteenth Amendment is what the set. If the Confederacy was going to accept peace and admit um, admit or uh, concede or whatever, mm-hmm. then they wanted to be admitted full status back in time to black people, granting them free full citizenship. What was right. the amendment that allowed the right for every man to vote? Thirteenth. The Thirteenth. Okay. Well, you know. If the Thirteenth Amendment isn't being upheld by Mississippi in 1967, then isn't there duty for the national government to protect its laws? Because that was one of the problems with the Articles of Confederation: is that it had no teeth, no national it centrally had, planned authority. It had absolutely no ability to to enforce what the protections what the, listed the Congressional Congress, uh, the congressional body said, and so that's why you had the formation of the three the, thir- the three branches. Uh, the Five Thousand Year Leap, I think, is a great book. I read that by the pool this weekend too, uh, uh, contributing to my wokeness by Cleon. You're uh, so star spangled oh, free. Oh, I'm fucking free, like you wouldn't believe. I have I have red, white, and blue painted all over my ass. Right now. <laughs> Nobody will see it, but I just stand in the mirror and look at it and realize I'm fucking free. I am. <laughs> so, Gross. so you have, uh, but y- y- you. You have uh, when you look at secession, you look at it and you go, okay, is is fighting to free slaves in in the southern states within your own country a just war? I could I could argue yes. Is uh, if you read Thomas D. Lorenzo's book, The Real Lincoln, and he kind of outlines the problems of why Lincoln was actually the worst president. And it's alluded to in the movie where he's like, I am, I have immense power. I'm clothed in immense power, and I'm the president, and I will have this. I mean, he, he, he was granted war powers, but they'd never been defined. Exactly right. So they were subject to interpretation. So he took it. And so in many ways, uh, he is the person who expanded the executive branch and, and, and completely perverted the foundation of this country and limited government and standing armies and was just a very destructive person in terms of how, uh, the growth of the United States government. A very foreign policy-minded position. It was its right. intent. You know, you were to handle the international affairs and that right. type of thing, not necessarily domestic. That was granted to Congress. Mm-hmm. And this was clearly something where his interpretation of the domestic threat was a rebellion, rebellion domestically. Right. And right. so that's what really changed, his, you know, it, it really changed the focus of the presidency. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then at the same time, too, you got to remember what Jefferson Davis and the Confederacy did by the le- letter of the law. And from the just from like compact theory, since the states created the federal government, mm. because that was what happened. You know that is clearly what happened. They had are they bound forever to that contract? Right. And so by the letter of the law and the principle, they had that right. Right. Lincoln knew struggled with the idea of that. In order to save it, I have to shred shred every single 
it, because it's a threat to the union, I have war powers that allow me to essentially do anything in its preservation because if it ceases to exist, I have failed as president. All right. right. I'm only president of a union. And so he suspended habeas corpus. Um, and But knowing that, he also did it prior to seeking re-election because he was so conflicted about it and what he had done and the Emancipation Proclamation, you know, under military times, freeing slaves, he had acknowledged they were property. Right. So when a peace was reached, they would go right back. And that's why the 13th Amendment had to be passed before they accepted the Confederate states back <laughs> or else they would not – they would go right back to being property. Yeah, because – Legally. Because they he he confiscated them as war as correct property by doing war. so he yeah. acknowledged they were property right. and so he was so conflicted by it he made sure that he had done that a year and a half before re-election because he knew at the end of the day no matter what ju- the judges will say or whatever will end up being the legal repercussions in a democracy the people will decide I'm accountable yeah. to them yeah. which is why he ran on the national union ticket. And yeah. so then you had the formation of the Republican Party and from then on there on in. But Lincoln very much was conflicted by it and knowingly did shred all over it. I mean, he and every took abused and violated every single tenant. He amassed armies on the southern border. I mean, he, he invaded, he invaded his own land. Yeah. And but once again, it goes back to was morally we agree. But look at how that's history the, works. That's the big difference. Yeah, is and you even see it in the Gettysburg Address, and this is, goes right back to Independence Day, is constitutionally Jefferson Davis, in court of law, a fair court of law, probably fine, probably would have been fine for the Confederacy to secede. So in, the, in it, rather than citing the adoption of the Constitution in 1787, he says four score and seven years ago, 1776, uh-huh. the Declaration of Independence as the foundation of the country, right? not the actual Constitution, Constitution. Constitution. right? because 19- he's appealing to... Our spirit, you know, what that I knowing I am knowingly violating the Constitution in the spirit of the original formation of, of our country, which I consider to be 1776. And it's I exactly mean, why he cites it. Wow. Okay. And and I just think it, like I said, it just goes back to the you know colonization of Native Americans, the um, the whole North Korean thing, and now I guess you can think of that is morally we we think one thing, but. These are all things of history. The and Bible look, has slaves. Exactly. And look how these things have turned out. And obviously this is not a pro-slavery. That was last week's episode. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, Depends on the, but people also forget the primary supplier of slaves to the slave traders were warring tribes. Right. So it wasn't like the white men went into Africa and all of a sudden started capturing people. They were sold to them. They were, they, they were domestic suppliers in Africa. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I just think it's, like I said, this whole episode has been wrapped into the question foundational principles yeah. of what is morally because i think every sane person can agree obviously that you know slavery is terrible what's happening in north korea is horrible and what we did to the native americans sucked but not the casinos not the casinos right but at the same time we're conflicted because look at history look at those three events look at all the i guess good that's come out of a lot of it but um what's actually good what's actually who decides good who decides right hard thing to actually most people never want to take that question on because there's nothing at the bottom of the well and it's so controversial yeah and especially in today's age you could not say that you know what i mean oh yeah because you know it's so easy to to craft a message against sa- saying such a thing right it's the easiest thing in the world like civil rights act right like rand paul saying when he went on rachel maddow and said i don't believe that anyone should have to sell like a racist store owner should have to abide by the Civil Rights Act. I think that's overreached by the government. Mm-hmm. He it, immediately the back the backswell was enormous. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, people had never considered such a thing. Like, should we force right. people? Should he have? Should Gary Johnson have to bake the bake the effing cake? Right. <laughs> you know, like that's the exact same prim- a principle he was taking on in that. And people don't want that because once you start getting into that. It becomes ambiguous. Yeah. Everything's okay. ambiguous. People hate ambiguity. This is what this says. This is how I live my life. This is what I'll be rewarded with. Right. And the way our society works is we're believing in a way, you know, taking an unbiased scientific approach to this. Mm-hmm. Our Western society is believing propaganda. 
right a different completely 100 percent different side of the spectrum propaganda than the you know uh communist d- dictatorship all propaganda is just a worldview to the extreme exactly and we're on two different sides we believe what we're doing is right they believe what they're doing is right and neither one of us can point to anything and say yes right and we can say well we're not you know enslaving our people and killing them but those marxists that i'm friends with on facebook could say well the war on drugs did this they did. well um you know the reliance of food stamps and the pushing of gmos and this to our people corporate bailouts basically is corporate what it bailouts. so yeah. i think it's just a very interesting point it is i mean you know it's all ultimately you know the perfect thing is food stamps because it was guaranteed sales for the biggest corporate lobbyists and food conglomerates right. there were and they could package it in well it's about the poor starving kids even though 30 percent go unclaimed mm-hmm. they still get paid for them they just go right. unclaimed and unused because it, you know, it's calculated into their profit, and they have to meet shareholders, and those shareholders are actually insurance companies and government pensions. Mm-hmm. So it's sort of this big incestuous web to an extent. But yeah, you, you, it's very rare that there's an objective environment without without judgment where a conversation can happen around these foundational principles right. that that get right to the heart of it. And especially people hate it though. Every time I've tried to have this conversation with someone who's needs that rigidity and that certainty and certain aspects of you know how to live their life. It doesn't even matter. Like, they can't ever get to the – they can't reach the logic because they're so incensed by the emotion. Right. Yeah. And so they just have to be like, no, you're just wrong and I don't care. Exactly. (laughs) I don't want to go there. Very interesting. Yeah. So what did you think of the movie, The Free State of Jones? Yeah, I thought it was – I thought it was really good. Um, Like Spangle said um, when we were watching it, there's not a boring moment or a slow moment. I thought it was great. He's so good as an actor too. Like he's so he good. was so good as I didn't even role. know that was him. I know, and I usually he's so not well. like that. I know it was incredible. Um, no, I thought that was a great movie. I thought it was. It really showed a side to, and it's a movie, but it really showed a side to history that you're not taught. And it was a real story. And it's a real story. You're not taught about the human human nature. Right, like these acts of rebellion are never advertised because, like, the thing is that. Most, you know, most cultures don't want to like point to. Oh, they decided no. Like America sounded kind of different in that. Like our thing was no. Well, why? why <laughs> we, we we were conceived in the rebellion. Right. We 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 have uh, the collective good is is always promoted, and standing up to government and saying no is not an idea that is often promoted. And this is literally people using guns mm-hmm. to st- and to fight against taxation. And oppression and say, no, I am in control of my own life. I'm standing up for myself. And so well-reasoned and justified. And, and, so, right. and so so well done. I mean, it's just, it's a great movie. It got absolutely destroyed by critics. It's on Showtime. Really? Every yeah. time. Every time. Yeah. Every single time there is a liberty, like any time, honestly, or a conservative movie, like that Kirk Douglas movie, any time it is suffer. not liberal. Oh, yeah. From the liberal worldview, the collectivist worldview, it is just destroyed. Well, look who uh, uh, controls the media. I won't go there. Yeah, thank you. I don't want you to sing. You make me so uncomfortable with that. <laughs> oh, ooh. I didn't say anything. <laughs> Whoa! I didn't I'm sing kidding. a song. <laughs> the, uh, no, the, uh, I wouldn't say it's a libertarian, conservative, liberal movie. It's, it's, liberals will like it because it, it's, it's like, it's fighting the racist agenda. And mm. it's a, it's you, a, you project onto it whatever you want to take The away protagonist from it. is definitely anti slavery. Pro equal rights in a time when, you know, he was literally risking his life to stand up for black people who were not considered human beings by the majority of the people that he lived around. He took people to vote, and they there was almost a, a mass murder, <laughs> and uh, it, it, by Democrats. That's never allowed in a movie. I haven't seen Democrats as pissed since I freed their slaves. <laughs> right. The Abraham Lincoln meme. <laughs> <laughs> so. It is it is a fantastic movie. It's on Showtime, but man, honestly, if you you don't have Showtime, just buy it. I'm, I promise it's worth you, it. You will you yeah, will watch great it. Great film. I watched it yesterday and today. I or I think yeah, I've watched it two days in a row now. I just really liked it. It's a lot. so funny when you think about like the Patriot, which runs all on Independence Day, right? Which is the American Revolution story, or you know, like or a creative license on it, and then you show the Free State of Jones. One is just absolute American propaganda, yeah. USA, USA. Right. The other, if it had been for a different cause rather than slavery, would have been seen as treason. Yeah. Right. Well, I think that if you watch the Free State of Jones, it shows the complexity of a secessionist idea, which 
is what I'm saying. Stand up to the government and say no. Like we, we doesn't it show you though? You have to be armed. But you have to be armed, and you have to be ready to fight because right. you are going to have to fight to you know the when when the American willing to die to get your freedom. The American mm-hmm. Revolution happened, and there was a war. It wasn't because anyone was invaded. It was a defensive war. It was us protecting ourselves from an aggressor. And that is the American ideal, and that is not interventionism. It is not laying down and waiting for someone to hit you. It is, it is not going over and building military empires in Korea that cause problems for the next 100 years. That's what we revolted against. That's exactly right. That's what the right. empire did. That, we have become the colonialist. We have become everything that they argued against in, in uh, the foundation of our country. Foreign entanglements. And, you go, know. go watch John Adams now and put yourself in the mindset of a pro-English person because that is the government you are arguing for if you are a Republican or a Democrat. And uh, the concept that you would invade other countries or force other countries or supply other countries and use military force as your first go-to or as the the guiding principle of the government is something that has brought us to financial ruin and it has for every other empire ever. It has brought the British Empire. It put British the, Britain into such a vulnerable position of World War II that that uh, Win, Winston Churchill knew that he had to bargain away the British Empire to Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and Roosevelt knew that he was asking for all that territory and forcing the British to give up their colonial ideals. And fundamentally changing the British people. And if they had never asked the Weimar Republic to repay all the debts at the Treaty of Versailles and the collapse of that empire, you'd have never had Adolf Hitler. Absolutely. Right. And so colonialism bad. but It, le- it always it, leads it to your destruction. Always leads to your destruction. No matter if you're the winner of the first, it will lead to your destruction like it did for Churchill in the second. Absolutely. So, uh, that, this has been a good show, so let's start wrapping up. Uh, Cat. That was a great selfie, Cat. Cat and Agnes. It wasn't a selfie. It was... <laughs> it's a hair check. She, I, no. I will, I will commend Cat. She's one of the most curious people I've ever met. Mm-hmm. You know, sorority girl. Uh, uh, but she's, You don't like that term, and yet you are. No, she just doesn't like me calling her a lesbian on the podcast. <laughs> sorority girl. She's curious. Oh, 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 she's oh, oh a, gotcha. The, the no, stereotype. Gotcha. Right. The stere- I was playing off the stereotype, not a truth about her personality. I just thought that you were assuming all sorority girls were lesbians. She's a good child of God. So, no. Oh god. She is she takes notes on things that she wants to go and look up later. And she's just a, mm-hmm. one of the most curious people that I've ever met in my life. Don't ever lose that. Yep. No, nope. ever. Most people don't have it. Although it's a rare pro- gift. That probably was a selfie, wasn't it? No, I was no, checking it wasn't. the Facebook. She was comment. checking something else. I was Jeez. just Jeez. They're all after me. Because we're the three best friends. We're the three best friends. What? Well, oh my God. <laughs> no, yeah, great episode, great movie. Uh, I really liked this topic. I like the how it just all tied back to the original. How we got back to the bare, bare bones, thing. yeah. Yeah, it was really, it was very interesting. Yeah, it was good I enjoyed it. Do you think it was good? Good Papa job. Papa Bear, Good Thank job you. staying Thank in- you. engaged. Of course. You, you didn't fidget nearly as much this oh, episode. Oh, no, that's why I had to go pee so bad because I've been just drinking all of my water and I'm just like down here under the table. I'm She's got her fidget spinning at levels fiddling, you wouldn't believe. Fiddling with my charger. It's been, it's been, <laughs> it's been very difficult for yeah. you. Thank you for suffering. For She's like a duck. Class it on top but underneath the table. I know. <laughs> just everything's Well, I'm surprised, Greg. I My leg is like shaking so hard. I was like, I didn't know how you didn't feel it. I did, but I was trying to be professional since so many uh, people want this to be quality content. Right. Yeah. Right, Hence right. me not having to use the restroom in the midst of the show. I'm so sorry about that. And then I revealed the spice rack behind. Frank's Red Hot. You remember Woo! when she wrecked the show, Greg? <laughs> I remember. But I, I brought it all back with my question. Yeah, I remember when you and Invited her to join work. We're and I love it's Fred. Best friends. Oh we're my god! Best Grease friends. stains we're on the back. <laughs> I know. Uh, we, we, why we does like... my shirt smell like Lay's? Hey, we. I, see, see, it's yeah. so funny. Like, Gr- Greg is my partner in this, but it's very much partner. Like, yeah, sexual partner. <laughs> why? Is, that, is there something wrong with that? Yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, Greg is very much my partner in all this and uh, has made many sacrifices to be a part of this podcast, uh, known and unknown to me until today. <laughs> uh, but, uh, y- you know, and so even like on little things, I'm always like, hey, what do you think, Greg? What do you think? 
But then, like the big stuff, I'm always like such like I just don't even think about it. I'm like, yeah, he'll, I, I, I don't even. I'm like, well, I'll be fine with it, I, like you know, because we both focus in different areas. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. But I'm that's like, why it works. But I'm like, yeah, until her. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, you know what? We the best, some of the best episodes that we ever had were with Gina Martinez they back in, in the 30s in <laughs> in 2013. We, in the 30 and 40 episodes, uh, you go back and listen to those. Gina was somebody who challenged us because she didn't know a lot and she was thinking about this stuff. and Totally emotion-driven. Everything she felt was her position. Right. Mm. And and so since Gina left, we were looking for like a female co-host who could, you know, who could add a female perspective but at the same time could hang and could also add a lot intellectually. We didn't know she was going to write songs about it. But. Right, right, right. <laughs> and so, like... They're I, still looking for that person I'm, I'm filling in. Or find her mustard gas dating history. Right. right. So for, like, a year or more, I've been after Kat to come on the podcast or come to a party or intern at the day job or, you know, be a part of this. Because I know how funny she is. Thank uh, you. Very funny. And Thank I know you. how funny and, and charming Chloe is. And Chloe was great. And Chloe was going to be our, our female co-host until she uh, no-show and nagnosed us. <laughs> Um, she went to the damn rims of Republic and, uh, never heard of him. No, exactly. And so no, RJ's awesome. He listened to the rims of Republic. It's a great podcast. Um, and so, so when Kat and I started hanging, I was like, Oh, she's going to fit in great. She's smart. She's curious. She's going to add a different perspective. She's on the other millennial spectrum on the other side of the millennial generation. Like this is, this is just great. To be here. This is her favorite day of the week, is it not? Yeah, I like it. Sorry, was that my cue? <laughs> no, no, it's been great. I've had a good time. I've learned good. a lot. And so, been enlightened. So I'm like, yeah, you can you can be a co-host now. You can come on any any Thursday you want, which is what I really say to like pretty much everybody. You do I do? I say, come on any Thursday you want. She's just brazen enough to take the invitation. She's literally like, <laughs> she had no idea that it was just like a throwaway invite, like you know. No. And then no. next, it was, thing a, I, it was a formality, a pleasantry. Next thing I know, she's on Facebook going, "I'm the permanent co-host." Yeah, because I want attention. I know, and I wanted people to think I'm. A part of something that's a bigger. libertarian podcast. Part of something that's bigger than a fake studio in the back <laughs> of a kitchen. It's no. like the Wizard of Oz, the guy behind the. Yes, no, he's pulling I, the strings. I, I, it's I, actually Bittner back there pulling our strings. <laughs> the puppet. So, Kat, I said, Cat, I'd love for you to be. You know, I want you to do this. You want to do this? Come on, that would mm-hmm. be great. And I never really thought, even like, oh, I should probably ask Greg and see what he thinks. <laughs> I was uh, going to be fine, but I was going to. Oh God. I, it, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god and then and then like he made a cutting comment yeah. at the party uh what was at the party the other day about how uh spangle put out a saucer of milk and ever since i started laughing did that up, get to you no it didn't get to no, me it was, it was it so was, funny it was like i'm not okay with this i didn't even have a say in this and like we both get in the car and go i forgot to say this to mention this to greg and cat goes do you think he's mad? I was like, I hope he's not mad. It was hilarious. <laughs> I can't stand you, but yes, li- put the saucer inside. Then we started like scrolling through your like tweets to see if there was any passive aggressive tweets about around the time that I became a co-host, yeah, saying like, no. "Wow, I guess people just walk all over you." Hashtag Starbucks. <laughs> no, I'm confrontational, which is what people hate. Mm. That's right. why I'm always in trouble. I got in trouble today. Didn't even unintentionally outrage somebody. What'd you do? Jeremiah had posted that news article about cannabis oil, <laughs> cannabis oil or whatever, yeah. and I just wrote, ugh, potheads, all caps, <laughs> and search. Sure enough, someone he, knew, uh, someone he knew a normie, had a daughter that needed it like to function and then got me into <laughs> I honestly didn't even mean it. I, there's a podcast that I do. There's an episode on it like about you know, I think CBD it's, oil. I think it's horrible. And then and then Jeremiah was just like Oh my God! And then Joyce, his mom, got involved, and I was like, "I have this incredible capacity to enrage people." Oh, and my mom was trolling people on Facebook. Did you I, see that's that? a, a fisherman can spot a fisherman from afar. <laughs> when I when I met your mom, I was like, "Oh, we could have gone to the same ship post college." <laughs> <laughs> so no, it, it has been great having Kat here, and Thank she's you. been a yes. great addition to the show. And we're the three best friends. <laughs> we're the three best friends. <laughs> and uh, so we and, share a microphone. Oh so God. after. She, after uh, after she was on a couple times, the the reviews like people were talking positively about Cat. Oh, yeah. shocked! I never and, did that. And, Read so, my high school yearbooks. And so when <laughs> when our audience says something positive about one of our co-hosts, they like you. I think it's because they liked my song. We need it though because we're getting older, or like you know, not that we're like old old guys, yeah. but like 
you lose you just lose touch with like what's culturally popular and so yeah. like and then the experiences you have with all your friends like it i would love to be able to just go pull people at a right. college university but that opportunity doesn't exist cuz you're that creepy guy with a clipboard <laughs> right <laughs> like you That's know what stopped i mean a lot of people. and most of them don't even know how to respond to the question so they just fake it right and so you can kind of you know get that commentary as someone that uh, is their cult is their peer yeah right well, so, I'm so, the pop star of Liberty. What can I say? That's right. We we found a good name <laughs> oh, for her, the pop star of Liberty after her smash hit, the Hitler song. I'm going to make a SoundCloud account, and we're gonna <laughs> okay. have parody songs. I'm actually songs. shocked you don't have one. Well, it's hidden, but no. Like your Tumblr? It's her, hey. it's her digital mixtape. Yeah, my Tumblr, which Harry outed me, and it doesn't I, exist anymore. Yeah, because I changed it. Because <laughs> I didn't realize. Long story short, I have a Tumblr account that's a straight up Taylor Swift fan page, and I we we're in the wall chat. We we're all joking, and they said something about my secret Tumblr, and I said, "I said yeah. I was going to commandeer it and take it over." Yeah, and I said, "Yeah, you'll never find it." And then three seconds later, n- Harry types in www.catanagno/slash Tumblr. It's like he had access to Prism and like. Well, <laughs> and like here's the it thing: up. he probably just Googled it because after it's I, your name. After I posted that, I was like, "Oh my god, my at name is literally my name." I was like, "They're not. They're not." What are the it. odds that if I put my name dot Tumblr dot com and someone searches my <laughs> name and Tumblr, Tumblr, that would be the first result. <laughs> well, then Stunning. I was like, oh, that's not that bad. And then I started scrolling through my Tumblr, and I was like, oh, this is embarrassing. Like, this is... Like, What's on the Tumblr? Some some rabbit hole stuff. That, about Taylor Swift's conspiracies? Something about that. But I was just like... Her rabbit wait, wait, pack wait, wait, of wait, lesbians? Wait, wait. No, no, no. No. <laughs> no, just like the things that the people I follow would post up, and of course that showed up in mine. Whatever. But I was like, oh, this is embarrassing. I gotta like... She's, gotta she's a little it. bit shady, to be honest with you. Well, I mean, she has like this dork, like sorry, not mm. dorkish. This obsession, yes. which like for us is libertarianism, right? It's us just, just saving the world with liberty. For her, right. it is an individual, mm-hmm. and typically that would be something that would be perceived as a stalker's behavior, not not exactly right. uh, you know widely acceptable. So I understand her need for her to feel the need to hide such a <laughs> yeah. It's no, an unusual it's just, obsession. It's just one of those things. It's like if I was a part of a Facebook group and somebody found my post, it would be um, quite devastating to my so, social circle. If you were doxxed by CNN. Right. So uh, I so, hit it. You created uh, the Taylor Swift so, me- so I yeah. hit it. I'm sure that Harry will still be able to find it, but oh, yeah. um, we I are liberta- it. We are Libertarians listeners. You have a challenge. Oh, God. Please. No, please don't. Tate <laughs> off Swiftler at Tumblr.com. <laughs> I hit it again. She's She is. Did you make it private or did you just change the She name? changed the domain. No, I, I tried to click on. I was going to screenshot it and then bring it tonight. It. She's, she's on Tumblr at least half the day. I'll show you what it looks like. <laughs> okay, this right. is literally what it is. All right. Let, oh dear Christ! <laughs> let me. Uh, this is not doing. No, you don't want to show this. I'm not going to show it, but let me. You you trust me, right? You know I'm not going to give away any personal information. It's like a okay. creepy let me, Pinterest board of Taylor Swift. It's such Swift a things. creepy. Give me give me your thing and let me describe what is on here. Remember the scrolling. Boston bombing when redditors put all the pictures, collated all the pictures together and found you know did, that's right. what she's done with Taylor Swift's life. All right, so we we have a very <laughs> aesthetic photo. We've got uh, a Harry Potter post. We've got <laughs> yeah. a Harry Potter thing. Oh, I'm embarrassed. We've got uh, another very aesthetic picture of flowers. We've got Swift. Uh, we've got a lot of aesthetic photo. A lot of pretty photography on here. A lot of Taylor Swift photography. Uh, you're, you're very into aesthetics, aren't you? Yeah, I just was trying out this new thing. If you scroll down, uh, trying one. out a new thing. Uh, but what is the new thing like? Just being aesthetically pleasing, but those pictures, I was seeing these pictures and I was like... In the mic. I was like, if Harry sees these, this is embarrassing. I I don't feel like any of this is embarrassing in any way, shape, or form, though. Let me show you this one part. Uh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) That's when you know it's going to get good, is... Let me show you this one part. <laughs> we we Now that's what I call autism. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> um is it not is it not hilarious how that oh. has like taken off as a term? Oh it is. <laughs> we just got our it, it's a lot of Taylor Swift gifts. <laughs> but like Kat, you're a twenty year old female who's a soft like a sophomore or a junior in college and in a sorority like junior by age, sophomore by credits. Right. That's but that's <laughs> kind of what we would expect your Tumblr to look like. Yes, but the you fewer selfies. You did not read the tags, right? Tag things like hashtag majestic and 
Oh, well, yeah, but right. that's no. fine. I have, fine. A, I have a secret life. It's fine. It's okay. Yeah, your secret life where you have meetings. <laughs> okay. We, we got into it yesterday. I've, I was like, you know what? Kat and I have a great open friendship, and we <laughs> tell each other a lot of things, and it's very, you know, I don't feel like Kat has Free ever, exchange of information. Has, yeah, right. exactly. It's, like, it's nice. No to judgment. Have, right. It's like you're, you, the yeah. friendship you and I have. It's yeah. like I don't judge you for anything. Like, the, I, I, vice I, versa. You accept me for my Hitler sympathies. I, right. How can I judge anybody? <laughs> right. And so Kat and I have, and that's why this partnership, the three of us, is going to work. Until yesterday. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, we accept her as a co-host. And, you know, <laughs> Friday night, tomorrow night at PopCon, uh, a pop festival here in Indianapolis at 7 p.m. tomorrow night, we've been nominated for two podcast awards. <laughs> uh, at 7 p.m. we're going to go uh, and accept our two awards or else I'm going to throw a fucking fit. <laughs> and uh, I will be recording it. Publicly apologize. <laughs> so, fake news. Yeah. Popcom is fake Is this fake like news. the Oscars? <laughs> so I, uh, I, you know, hey, Kat, you're a co-host now. Greg's going. Harry's going. Christy, our super fan's going. You want to come with us Friday night? And you, you go to it. And she goes, uh, I, I would. I just have a thing. I go, what do you, what do you, do you have a thing? She goes, I have a meeting. I go, you have a meeting on a Friday night? Yeah, it's a, you know, a sorority thing. I have a meet. I go, wait a minute. <laughs> don't, don't jump in here yet and fact check me, okay? You have a meeting with a sorority at Friday night. Yeah, I, just, I can't talk about it. It's super secret. <laughs> I go, sure it is. Now, Greg, if you were cat and you were lying about what you were doing. <laughs> oh, my God. You would, bad. you would immediately jump. I've got a, a, a sorority thing. Yeah, that's what I got to do. <laughs> and I go, do you have a date and you just don't want to talk about it because you don't want a million questions about the guy? And she literally goes, <laughs> a date. <laughs> which, she was, which she was so genuinely. It's just so she, sad. She genuinely hysterically laughed at the idea that she would have a date on a Friday night. Is there a chemical gas making <laughs> dating site? Uh, yeah, yeah, part of it. What what is it, it's funny because she's she's a beautiful, smart, Thank intelligent you. woman, <laughs> and she like doesn't, literally laughed out. I l lol. Literally lol. <laughs> she it was Greg's about to it was the only genuine thing in this conversation. It was her going, <laughs> date, and I I go okay. Well, we'll cross that off the list. <laughs> I almost ROF felt. She I she rolled on the floor. She laughing. goes. Real. And I go, oh yeah, Libertarian Podcast. Yeah. Uh, trust me. The she... minute I joined this podcast, it was just defriend. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> well, like, you, you know, know your track record of flipping. Right. right. You know what, Cat? <laughs> you know what, Cat and I do on Friday and Saturday nights. Mark <laughs> other and talk about, you know, the Alex Jones. Alex Jones. Did you see where no they will... praised Moloch? <laughs> no one will take us out on a date. Well, <laughs> here's the thing. First of all, I was not that sketchy. Second of all, oh. I ha oh. Oh. Oh, I don't Second of all, I have this problem where when I don't want to explain something because it's a long story and nobody will care, I just make it general. So I'm like, yeah, I have a meeting. Then I a few minutes later I explained to him all this drama you that You feel was... the need to justify and just start verbally throwing up? Because I, I knew that he wouldn't want to hear about it because nobody did. So I was just... Which is not the case. Right. So I just said, oh, I have a meeting. But then the idea, him laughing about it, saying, oh, a meeting on Friday night. And then the like inner panicking of like, I'm being guilty. And then <laughs> laughing about how um, guilty I sound made me start getting nervous. And then I was sweating. And then I was laughing and because I was giggling. And I got defensive. defensive and awkward. And I go, and then I got defensive because I'm like... Am I like prying? Am I being a creep here? Like, honestly, like if I, I literally like minutes later go, hey, if y you f sh should feel no pressure, <laughs> I got very serious and I go, you should feel no pressure to go to anything. If there's things like, like I because you're new and you want to fit in, and they gave me a heart to heart. If you if you feel like like I can't go or I don't want to go or I want to go hang out with friends, like we're not gonna get mad about that. You're not gonna get kicked out of the friend group or whatever. Like. You genuinely can just say the truth and just go, no, I'm gonna, I want to hang out with my other friends because I'm going to see you guys Thursday and Saturday. I, I, that's fine. You know what I mean? And so because I felt bad, I was like, I hope she doesn't feel pressured into like, right. you've got to go because I was giving her shit. But she just came across so fucking guilty. And then it was funny because I was like, <laughs> he was giving me his serious heart to heart. I'm like, Spangle, what on earth could there be in my life that I'm keeping from everyone? Like, let's be real. Other than Tumblr? 
Um, but I just showed you it. That's you true. know what I mean? Yeah. So come on out. But um, it was just hilarious. And I want to pull <laughs> the clip where you reenacted how I was because my roommates always accuse me because, again, I don't want to explain some long, boring thing to them. So I say I have a meeting. And so they've started calling me out. I'm like, oh, it's Saturday morning. What kind of meeting do you have, Cat? Like, Can I come? Exactly right. Like, so weird. And then I start laughing because it's hilarious. And then I get nervous. And then it's a like it's last, a vicious cycle. Last Sunday or whatever, I was like, "You want to you want to do this thing?" And she's like, "No, I got to get back. I have a brunch tomorrow." I go, "You're a college student who has a breakfast the next day." No, swear to God that that's true. Yeah, that literally. I had is. a breakfast the sororities. Meeting. No, I believe, yeah sororities. I believe her. I always philanthropy and brunch. We're gonna give a hundred dollars for this twenty five hundred dollar event to those right. kids that you know. I don't know what do they have. And Are then those? we're going to all go have mimosas. It's just funny how, like, she says it in a way where, like... Suspicious I'm, immediately. Immediately, and I'm just like, cat, <laughs> like, am I being a dick for, like, prying? It's okay. Like, right, but then I laugh. I'm like, what could there be? <laughs> Did you ever discover what the nature of the meeting was? Yeah. yeah, I, yeah it's, I, like, bullshit. It literally is, like, a dumb thing. And I support AA, and I'm proud of you for taking <laughs> exactly. control of your life. I was like... You know, do, do you have a FWB that you're, you know... Hit? If you're on another fucking podcast, though, you're off. Uh, I, I guess. She literally, she literally goes... I just, she got very serious. She looks me dead in the eye, and she goes, I've been talking to Remzo from Remzo Republic, and Chloe and I may start our own podcast. And I go, you bitch! It was hilarious. Oh, that'd be fine, unless, like, six episodes. Exactly right. Uh, they'd kill each other. Uh, right. So, like, I was reading. Did you know Taylor Swift's kind of libertarian? At the exact same moment hey, that, that was we happening, we don't want to get into that. Rimzo was commenting on my page. I about saw that. that at the exact moment that that argument was going. I know on. it was, was perfect. Fun. What's uh, the show called? Rimzo Republic. Oh, whatever. Oh. Brian Church, our friend from high school, says, "Greg Lynn, Greg Lynn's, what's up?" Uh, hey, brother, how are you, dude? Other than Brian Church and I hung out all the time because he was my next door neighbor. But he says hi to Greg. It's fine. <laughs> He's a hell of a guy. We played in a golf outing. Fuck you, Brian. Oh. I'm just kidding. I love Brian. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but for the record, if any of the six fans out there want, uh, six of my fans want to meet me, we'll be at PopCon on Friday. Yep. Are you going? Yeah. So you're getting out of your meeting? Yeah. I'll be there. Yeah. And then uh, then we have trivia at Scotty's <laughs> Brewhouse at 9 p.m. So come watch We're Libertarians. Oh, so we're going to the meetings for, or no, we're not going to your meeting. We're going to our <laughs> own meeting. Right. right, right. Which had nothing to do with this award was won long before you ever joined. Right, so right. So we're, we're going to go early in the day and i'm going to show her around and show her all the nerds and we may what i have always wanted to do is go to like a pop con with all these cosplay people and ask them serious political <laughs> questions and have like a teenage mutant ninja you're gonna turtle. larp no you're gonna, you're oh, gonna I've, LARP. LARP. I've larp before i love that having it's fun what <laughs> all of a sudden got so silent did the mics go out testing one two <laughs> what larping is fun LARPing was fun. I did it for a charity event in high school. That's how it starts. Next thing you know, you're in New Hampshire at the Free State Project. <laughs> LARPing. My nap. Thank you for listening to We Are Libertarians. Blah, blah, blah. Do oh, next my time. nap. LARPing for liberty. No, uh, um, live action role My playing. elected officials that switched. I just, live action role playing. I just think it would be so funny to have uh, Sailor Moon talking about economic policy and tax cuts. <laughs> So we're going to go out there early, so we'll be out there. Are you doing that? Uh, pr probably. What time? So where is it at 7? I need to be, Scotty's? Uh, no. The the convention. We'll talk convention about Convention Center other. first. Convention Center, 7 p.m. Scotty's at, at 9. nine. Uh, it's 10 bucks to get in the door okay. tomorrow uh, to, to come to the awards. But we'll be there. So if you're going to PopCom, come see us. Do we get to give a speech? Uh, if Oh, I'm giving a speech no matter what. <laughs> oh, I'm giving. I'm accepting the award. Yeah, we're having. That would be about right. <laughs> no, if we win. I have worked. Enslaved for two weeks. If if we win the award, all of us are going up. Oh God! We're, Holding hands. We're all going. Oh up. no, no. We're gonna. <laughs> no. no. Yes, let's Give take your a hand, Greg. No, take Greggy. You don't wash, and you're greasy. I wash sometimes. <laughs> Greggy, ow. Greg, Greg's hands are enormous. They are. I have I huge hands. My God. You look I wear size 14. I'm only six feet. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, yeah. I have ogre hands. You do. Yeah. Oh. Holy shit. Yeah. Greg, you have like Shaquille O'Neal hands. I know. So oh it's going to be perfect when we accept that award. Yeah. <laughs> you could just 
So Palm we're, it. we're gonna yeah. we're gonna <laughs> <In a> basketball. <laughs> I highly doubt it at a podcast award ceremony. We're gonna stand in a in a chain. <laughs> we're gonna hold hands and take a collective bow. And we're gonna like silent I'm like dying. golf clap for everyone. I'm cringing so <laughs> like, hard inside. It's gonna be like Kim Jong Un getting um recognized for an award. Just all these people. <laughs> no, please Straight clap. Face. Please clap. Please for Jeb clap. Bush. Another the Jebolution. <laughs> Everyone, please, another round of applause for me. Yeah. I'm going to, like, and then I'm going to get, like, a little feather duster and, like, dust off Spangle's shoulders. <laughs> like, speaking up there. This is just going to be, and if I, <laughs> and, and, and if we don't win, if I don't win, I'm going to throw such a fit. I'm going to stand in the middle of the aisle. I'm going Fake to news. lay on the ground on my stomach. I'm going to bang my fists. I'm going to go full Veruca Salt. I want my own daddy. <laughs> oh We're my going God. to no. I almost hope that happens. Greg's going to go up there and be like, "Popcom is fake news." Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> I, I don't even. I, these are uh, these aren't my people. Like I, I wasn't a, a gamer or a cartoon or that stuff. So I'm so uncomfortable around. You know. Oh, we'll get you in a latex suit. God. Yes. Uh, I'm not a dom- I, I know. I've seen that before with somebody spangled, made me invite on. I'll never make that mistake again. Oh, we have had a banner week with Melissa Donahue. Oh, have yeah. We not? <laughs> we, oh. She threatened to be sued by her. We, I threatened to sue her, and she threatened to sue me today. That was that, That's how deep it got. Heck, <sighs> yeah. So... She has the documents on Pizzagate, so by God, that's great. Yeah. That's better than the anonymous sources. We did a great job, and then the wheels really fell off. We, we, did, did. we didn't do much bullshit at the beginning, so you got it at the end. We wrapped there. it up. Yeah. Right. So, Kat, it's very nice having you here. Thank you for having me. Thank you again. All right. We'll see my two fans at tomorrow. At PopCon. Six to two already, huh? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Chloe will be there. Mm-hmm. Allegedly. Allegedly, and maybe, I don't know, that one guy who keeps DMing me on Instagram. <laughs> Tanner? There's only, no. There's only one. Usually Tanner and I are, engaged. are is it Is it Harold Biker? Your friendly something. Your friendly neighborhood. Oh, okay. Libertarian? I don't, I don't know. know him. No. Harold Biker is convinced you and I are going to get married. Mm. He keeps commenting about all that. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> you got to sew a wedding sack first. If, 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 like if, I, if, if and when I propose, you better not reply like that. I guess. All right. Fine. Yeah, like whatever. What? <laughs> Seems to be a trend. I could do worse. Oh. Greg, <laughs> how about you? Uh, no, I'll be there, and I look forward to your guys, your antics. I will, I'm, I will watch. I, I will what? participate. Why not? I'm not as funny as you. You guys are actually comedians. You're funny. Oh, yeah, you're well, very funny. For libertarian, yeah, libertarian podcasts, I'm up there among the elites, but not comedy comedy. No, I think you're funny. Not laugh out loud comedy. No, I, laugh, I LOL at your stuff. Uh, I I can do snark from time to time, but in front of an audience, I'm going to leave it to the pros. <laughs> okay, well, well, we'll take the reins. Now's your time to shine and take all the credit for... Five years of hard work. Right, that I've just been here. And the great part is if we win, all of my Facebook friends will, like, I'll get my sorority will shout me out. Like, it's like, I did this, and it's going to be delicious. (laughs) And I'm milking it because it's so funny. Uh, (laughs) You like me. You really like me. You really like me. Oh, God. (laughs) Spangle. Yes, ma'am. Your final thoughts? My final thoughts are uh, thank you, everyone, for, for being here. Uh, I appreciate you all very much. I am you, and you are me. Uh, I, you are the state. I had uh, just, <laughs> yeah. just pulled up uh, Jennifer's name. I want to thank a few people uh, for helping us out. As al- always, we we have so many people who are so mm-hmm. generous to us and do so much to help us uh, grow. You know, uh, we we have so we have so many and uh, so many monthly contributors who who help pay the bills on Patreon and on PayPal. You guys, uh, I, I do not, and we do not give you enough thanks and do not do enough to thank you guys, and I, and I apologize for that. I am aware of that. Uh, it's just so hard to get the content out and, and get to, to do everything that we need to do and everything I want to do. Um, but I want and you, balance them all. I want you to, guys to know that if you do make a monthly contribution, I know you're listening because you guys listen to every single minute of the show, and you guys support us and, and love us so much, and we thank you so much for that, and... Uh, I just appreciate our monthly contributors. Uh, Still wouldn't be doing it. No, no, there's 100% chance we would not do this if we didn't have monthly contributors because it is too expensive. It is now way too expensive for us to do this. When you guys donate, that allows me to buy the equipment that we can do a video program, so you can share just the content you want to share. You know, we're taking the video and segmenting it out. I'm segmenting out little pieces. All that's on the YouTube channel. Really, our intern should be doing that. Honestly. Uh, I'm not the intern anymore. So, oh, shit. 
Yep. We need a we need a new intern and Damn not it. not Colin Schaefer. Uh, <laughs> so Colin, I totally forgot you're not an intern. <laughs> I know. Sorry, so, buddy. You're a person now, not property. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, so no, we have uh, we we have uh, the ability to do so much more and and create more libertarians because you guys allow us to do that. It just you guys are so great to us. I want to thank Jennifer Himmelberg. She sent us some SD cards. These like little things like this. She went to our Amazon wish list through WeAreLibertarians.com. And she bought two SD cards for us that give us the capacity to record the entire show. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she probably spent around $60 on this for us. That's $60 that I didn't have to spend on equipment that I needed to produce a product that is going to give you something to share with your friends from the show as well as help other people discover the show. Uh, we're we're spending money on Facebook advertising, so we can right imperialize now. the rest of society exactly. with, our, right. with our libertarianism uh, exactly. and our dear leader, who we're cr- slowly creating a, li- a religion around. <laughs> yes, yes. That you need to pledge absolute. But if you rip his banner off the wall, <laughs> then yeah, fifteen yeah. years hard you labor. You go to labor camp. <laughs> Ryan Ryan Ripley, he donated a, a printer to us, and that's uh, awesome. You know, so the printer, Love Ripley. the printer is going to help us uh, listen to his podcast, Agile for Humans. Smart, smart guy. He's a Love very Ryan. smart guy. And and today I love coming home to Amazon packages and I didn't order anything. We got uh, a microphone, a sure microphone. Like this is a hundred dollar microphone wow. that I, I needed one more microphone and somebody donated a hundred dollar microphone ass. to us. I have no idea who sent this to us. If you're the one who sent it, uh, there wasn't a note in the box or whatever. So please hit me up and tell me that you so I can thank you properly. But it's stuff like that where people just you know they send us equipment or they send us donations. And then I put all that right back into into uh, what we're doing here, scaling it out and, and scaling mm-hmm. it up. I'm bootstrapping this, and eventually, hopefully, at, at least uh, starting with me, and then all three of us, and then sixty people like Alex Jones will be doing this full time. So, thank you guys so much. I, I just I appreciate that, and it's always humbling to get that notification that somebody donated and uh, to come home to an Amazon package where you guys have spent your hard earned money. And I know that you have a lot of options on on podcasts that you can listen to or independent media outlets that you can support. And I'm just humbled and, and uh, thank you guys for choosing to help us because it, it really does mean a lot. And Tons. It, it means a ton. Tons. I mean, it's, that you would be willing yeah. to take our opinions and ramblings and consider them as something worthy of a you know, three hours out of a week to listen to is yep. shocking. Hundred dollar microphone. It's hard enough to you know even get opinions heard, let we're, alone listen to and ask for more. We've had you know we Facebook Live this. We've had fifteen people the entire time. We're going to have a few thousand views on the Facebook live stream. You know that came from the ability for that came from Jason Doolittle sending yep. us a Mevo camera and uh, and also you know the ability to to broadcast that out is is huge. We're up to. On audio, we're up to 9,000 listeners an episode. That's, we're adding 1,000 people a month. On video, wow. we're now, you know, we're now uh, going to be around 1,000 people watching on video. So just our, keeps getting 10 just, feet higher. Just 10 <laughs> feet higher. Uh, so, so, yeah, thank you guys so much. If, if you can't donate, that's fine. We appreciate you guys just listening. Oh, God, but even a like or a share that you tag us in means li- the world to us. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, you know, you can add, and I can add Cat to the front page, but you can like, you can follow... <laughs> Greg and I, if you want to follow us on our personal stuff and see our dank memes there, uh, and as well, join the Facebook group and get Greg's Greg's great uh, research that he posts in there every day. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for uh, joining us here on this uh, episode of We Are Libertarians. Thank you, Greg and Kat, for being here. Thank Thank you you. uh, to the world for providing us with information, and uh, we will see you next week. And as always, we promise to do do better better next time. time. Oh. oh no 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 no! Stole it. Listen here. I've been waiting all hour to do this. Listen here, honey. This is a problem. Coffee now. Yeah. Pronto, tanto. We need to do this over because she. So I have been waiting. <laughs> I have been waiting. She just home, waiting. She just homesteaded it. I have been waiting <laughs> to do that all the oh. And as always, we promise. Did you better? No. <laughs> no. That was a trick. No. Well, I want miserably. something cool to say. No. Hey. no. I want no. something I'm, cool I'm going to let it pass where earlier you kicked it back to me on the soapbox and the roundup, and I was like, oh, my God, she's a co-host and not intern. <laughs> was that bad? I thought it was I supposed was, to be a co-host. That was awfully assumptive. That's all I'll say. Did you just assume your co-hostness? Yeah. Yeah. She did. She assumed As always, her way we'll right into, a, into a... <laughs>
I just stopped recording. <laughs> <laughs> She's turned into a punk. <laughs> no. What's up? Oh, now I see what Chloe What's was saying. Up? What was no. Chloe saying? Nothing. <laughs> I'm just making her paranoid. She didn't say anything. Uh, mm-hmm. Shall we? All right. Thank you. And as always, we promise to do better next time. <laughs> My name's Cat. I'm